right numbers. Hey, welcome to Cleveland Moto Podcast number 453. <sighs> right on schedule. It is. It is absolutely right on schedule. Freezing our little tails off out here. Uh, but, you know, we got some good news for you. It's a, it's, it's a mighty fine day here at the Cleveland Moto Podcast. We even have a song about it. Okay, bring it on. I work in the sewer, it's a very hard job You know they won't hire just any old slob You don't have to wear a tie or a coat You just have to know how to float We sing the song of the sewer Of the sewer, we sing this song Together we stand with shovel in hand to keep things rolling along. Triumphant return of the Grumpy Grumpy Sewer Sewer Guy! Guy. Light them up, boys. Light them up, indeed. Yes! Uh, The most requested uh, subject matter for the Clean Moto Podcast for a long goddamn time is. GSG, what's the deal? Yeah. And now we're going to get it first hand. Right. Exactly. For, for From Patreon the members only. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> hey, this is no joke. This is, uh, this wow. is us signing off to all you non-Patreon members. <laughs> wow, Steve, that was an amazing story. That was brilliant. I'm so glad you showed up. Now, that's what would happen if you're not a Patreon member. Uh, well, yeah, to my left, my immediate left is... Pete Hemfling. And he's normally radio right. Right. And now he's radio left. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And then after, next to him... Dan Kropke. Hey, and... Uh, me, Steve Sleepy. And... <coughs> Johnny Mack. And to his left... Steve Hofford. <laughs> and the crowd goes wild. And to his left... <laughs> Chris Smith. And bartending tonight... Tom Pennington. And your humble narrator, Unky Phil Waters. So, yeah, man... You're back! Yay! The bad part is I can't remember anything. (laughs) (laughs) The good part is you haven't missed much. (laughs) Yeah, so back when I was on the Misfits podcast, I mean, no, the Cleveland Moto podcast. Uh, Yeah, this is the basement. Welcome to the the Rats Keller, if you haven't been down here before. This is the first time I've been down here. What What do you you think think? compared to the uh, scooter shop? I like being around motorcycles. We all do. Yeah. Yeah. all do. But, but I understand, too, yeah. that you can't have this table interrupt your workspace. And now that the shop's so filled with motorcycles, yeah. it's really... It's, uh, we're volume, our, our inventory is very, very fucking high. And the table, it wasn't so much that the table was taking up so much room. So was sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> the problem was the, the setting up and tearing down of the table and getting things ready to and for podcast every time uh, was just like, fuck, man, I just want to get out of the shop. Mm. Yeah, I, you know, the, the 14-hour days are one thing, but then you throw a podcast on top of it, and you're like, oh, Jesus Christ. So the, the, the downstairs here, it sounds really nice. So the people that are listening to the podcast have said how good it sounds, how the, warm, the room sounds like, well, like a room. Like a German bar. As opposed to the scooter shop, which had the sound of 67 fluorescent lights humming. A facility. <laughs> a fa- <laughs> Please step into the facility. So, uh, since last we talked and y'all listened, how's your, uh, tell everybody out there listening your own firsthand account of the crash that so very nearly took you from us. Or even start before, like, what were you doing up there? Like, you know, maybe there, that'd be a good spot. Well, I have a camp up in the Adirondacks that I've had for years. I went there on my honeymoon 34 years ago and we bought into this this, it's a well, they call them camps, but it's a house, whatever. Yeah. And we had built a bunkhouse behind it, and I was bringing up bamboo flooring to finish it off. I did the electrical in it, and we were going to put in bamboo flooring that weekend. It was April 15th or 16th, and I, I, I actually don't remember any of this because I don't remember even going to New York, and I don't, I, I remember thinking that it was the first weekend that you guys were, that were going to do the podcast on Thursday down in this basement. Mm-hmm. And that's the only th- that's the last thing I remember is that we were going to do a podcast that Thursday, but I had gone up to New York. Wow. And that, but I was going up to New York, and the next thing I remember, I woke up and uh, stepped down. Fucking so hell. I don't I don't remember anything from, I don't even remember going to New York. But I know I did because I have 
pictures and video on my phone, which miraculously did not get broken during the crash, and my motorcycle didn't really get damaged because I was the flesh bag that stopped it from getting busted up. So I just saw the- I just saw a thing about this. That, you know, when you have the type of injuries that he had to the spine in the back, like the neck part, there's something where you actually have a sort of amnesia and everything because when everything has to regrow back together, some of the random access memory gets lost. Wow. Yeah, so, and it, part of it too was I broke my occipital bone in my skull, and I, I know I had a concussion. They said I did not have a concussion, but my memory's been shot for, I mean, it, four months after the accident. Wow. I still didn't have, my memory finally came back correctly, so. You remember you still owe me money, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but the funny thing is, is my grandmother came over on the Titanic. And I crashed and burned on the same day that Titanic Get sank. Get out of here. Uh, so that was, that was an interesting thing. So that I, is weird. I figured that's why my life was spared. Right. Because they already got one on that day. Yeah. They got, they, well, they got 16 of them. Whoa. They got 16. Well, I mean, I'm adopted, so right. they were not Hofferts. But, right. Um, but it was a, it's a weird thing when you can't remember. And it's a, the, the worst part, I, I tell you, I broke a lot of stuff. I mean, I crushed my spine. I lost my spleen. I lost nine and a half liters of blood. I, uh, they replaced my blood twice. Oh. I have like five pounds of titanium in my left leg, and uh, I have cadaver bones in my back. I dislocated my uh, right wrist, and I have pins and you know everything. I, I, there's like all these like small bones that allow your hand to flex, and I dislocated all those small bones in my hand. But um, the day I got out, the day I woke up, I stopped all medication because mm-hmm. I've never taken medication in my life, and I'd rather feel pain than be drugged up. But the weirdest part and the worst part of the whole experience is I, I was dreaming the whole time, and it was the most nightmarish dreams that you've ever yeah. seen in your life. It was like Nazis doing experiments on like children and killing children, and like <laughs> they used to stainless oh, steel like rooms with glass with people being cut up. And they kind of alluded to the fact that they couldn't give me, because of my blood chemistry, Mm -hmm. because I was crushed, I had something called rhabdomyolysis. Rhabdomyolysis. I had it when I was in the police academy. It's where you have so much damage to your muscle tissue that your bloodstream gets loaded up with damaged proteins and stuff. That goes into your kidneys, shuts them down. Jesus. And then you have all kinds of problems. like Like my whole body was crushed. Right. And so I had that, and because my blood chemistry was so far off, and I couldn't, they couldn't touch me because I had two and a half liters of blood in my lungs, and they, when they, like, they rolled me at all, my, my, I would, my blood pressure would go to zero. Yeah. And they and fucked s- around for like three weeks with that. And then yeah. all of a sudden, they, they, they realized it, and then they drained your lung, and then that's when you really got stable enough to do the surgery, and then yeah. you got surgery. So evidently, I was semi semi comatose during my surgeries and so the nightmares were not actually nightmares but they were like me observing like the surgery like being in a semi awake state because they said that my eyes like i had something too i had um uh, psychosis because of like everything wrong with my blood chemistry and all the drugs they gave me so my they said i didn't close my eyes for three weeks they had to put vaseline on my eyes because I was just staring out into space and it was just it was a bizarre you are I, not a good candidate for recreational pharmaceuticals no I'm not and I tried to escape <laughs> I, I know pulled, he's I, over here talking about all this and I'm like hmm because no, <laughs> that could be your world man <laughs> yeah. but but I pulled I tried to escape multiple times yeah. because I thought the Nazis the, all the doctors and nurses were Nazis and I no, pulled no it's the billing department yeah well they <laughs> and I found that out after after this happened but I pulled my vent out I was on a oh. vent for three weeks oh I pulled my vent tube out. I pulled my nose tube out. I pulled my pick tubes out. The most dependable person in the world was watching him, too. Yeah. Yeah, my son watched me, and that's when I did it. Of course. But then they had to tie me down. (laughs) And then because they tied me down, I got bed sores on my heels. So it ate through my foot into my bone. Yeah. Nasty. So, I mean, whatever. What's the name of this health system? No, it was great. They saved my... Believe me, they... (laughs) They reconstructed. Uh, it was funny because they all came in because they thought I was. They, they really everybody thought. Look I was at this dead. guy. 
Well, yeah, because he clearly free fell out of a goddamn weather balloon based on the injuries. But wait, let's go back real quick. Remember when John was bringing us information? Yes. And he was like, the cop almost like just put him in the back of the car. Like right. he was that damaged, but the dude who showed up and found him didn't seem to understand. That no, because I crawled out. Somehow you, I went into a ditch off the side of the road. Right. And somehow I crawled out of the ditch. And I mean, I'm, I think it was a miracle, like something. I mean, I know it sounds stupid, but. It's like almost like an angel lifted me out of that ditch and put me on the side of the road. And when the cop came, I said, just get my bike. And I'm going to ride home. But I don't. <laughs> but the thing is, I don't remember any of it. It's like in the report. Yeah. But I don't remember anything. I remember like briefly. I, I remember uh, like a split second of seeing deer. I remember a split second of like, you know, like subway tiles and glass windows. Like, like being that, on a Heather's gurney. waiting room. Yeah. And then uh, I remember being in an ambulance going from like Lake Placid or Saranac Lake, which is near Lake Placid, down to Albany Medical Center. And then I woke then I woke up and I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, I didn't know what was going on. And I said, when can I? Like the first thing I said was, I realized I was like laying in a bed. And I said, when can I ride again? And my wife said, I hate you. You're never ride. You have to promise me that you're never going to ride a motorcycle again. And I mean, I didn't even know what was going on. I I had no clue what happened. I I knew nothing except that it was. I had all these nightmares that were hideous. Like uh, the other nightmare was there was a patch of like a knit like quilt work. Okay. And then every night I was pulling on the quilt work, unraveling it, and it would unravel down to the end, and I would die. Oh. And then. I would wake up yeah. and the quilt work was back yeah. along, and this was along with the visions of Nazis and yeah. like intermittent visions of like tables with like people getting hacked up. And I'm sort of disappointed it, I wasn't part of your nightmare, man. I really no, <laughs> no, it you're my you're my waking it. nightmare. Well, there was there was a there was a Nazi that looked like Schulte from, <laughs> but it was just weird. I mean, that's the weird part. Like you oh, think yeah. you always think that you're gonna be. You're gonna real like you're gonna always like know what's going on, and that's just like warning to somebody that you may not know what's. You going may not on. know what's going yeah. on, but you know now I'm good. I mean, uh, it took a, the yeah. rehab took a while. I couldn't walk for it's like 16 <laughs> weeks. I was unable to walk. Mezzo, mezzo. But um, but I mean, I'm back at work. I'm doing both my jobs. I work. 10, 12 hours a day. And you I should mean, be on sick leave. Uh, well, yeah, I have a ton of sick time. Yeah, I know you do. But that's the first time I called in sick for 26 years. Yeah, but there's no, you don't get a special trophy for not burning up sick days. Yeah, but it's like insurance to Especially me. Especially when you're hurt. Um, yeah. For but, people in the podcast world who don't know Steve and haven't been around him, <laughs> Steve is the number one likely guy to show up out of a ditch missing half an arm Sure. Half an arm, missing half an arm, and when you call attention to it, he will straight up deny it. <laughs> he will say, what's the problem? Let's go do this. Mm -hmm. That I've never, ever known him to bellyache about shit. It's not going to get any worse. We might as well... There's only a flesh wound. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, this whole thing about, like, that durability factor of Hoffert is legendary. Mm -hmm. It does not surprise me that you're denying the help of the EMTs or telling the police officer, so okay, got this. He hates doctors. Yeah, I know. Completely. I hate them like you would yeah. believe. But, yeah. but the thing is that, that so I'm leaving the hospital. Most likely to argue with an EMT. <laughs> All the surgical teams are coming. I had like five surgical teams, right? And there's like five people on each team, four or five people on these surgical teams. And they're coming in to see that I'm still alive. Yeah. And they're talking to me. And the one guy says to me, good thing we fixed your back because you were split open like a Pez dispenser. <gasps> that's what the guy told me. And I'm like, that's the last thing. He's like, you're one tough motherfucker. Yeah. And the other guy said, you're one tough motherfucker. We all knew that. And I'm like, you know what? It's just because you have no pain cells. You know, like you don't feel pain. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm tough. I mean, I just... Like, it's just something that happened to you. <laughs> I'll take so. the pain. You can take the nightmares. I don't... Uh, yeah, no, I don't have my like choice said, between the I two. I just feel like they're just something disconnected up there. That's all. Right, right. It's the computer doesn't go... The elevator doesn't go all the way to the top floor. Yeah. Well, it's well, like three I mean, degrees today, and Steve's wearing shorts. Oh, I also broke all my ribs. On the left-hand side, yeah. I broke all my ribs and my skirt on. <laughs> And those are the things that still was there. Me was there like a Steve-shaped indention in the guardrail or something? Like what? There was what? no guardrail. It Nobody was like, even knows. The, I, oh. I was. They said I was like I 
woke up for like 10 seconds in the emergency or in the ICU. And I had like a vent, you know, like you see it in the in movies, like a vent and all these IVs that were feeding me. I don't know how much like intravenous stuff to wash the crap the out of my blood. The answer is everything. But mm. Whatever they my, had, you got it. I put my finger up like this. My wife said, what happened to you? And I put my, fang, my one hand, the one hand I could move right. because that's, I could only move my left arm. And I went like this. Yeah. I mean, I, I wiggled my finger above yeah. my head. Yeah. And I, they had a whiteboard and I wrote, there were a lot of them. Yeah. And that's the only thing, that's the only clue. And they kept on saying, well, did you fall asleep or did you For the people at home, Steve was giving the symbol of deer, right? The antlers symbol with his one working hand, inferring that perhaps um, there were a lot of deer. At but the point but of I don't know. But I remember, I remember like seeing like 10 deer. Probably like wasn't in, unicorns. Yeah. No, right. but, I, but I thought yeah. I saw it. Like, I have this split-second image of 10 deer, but I don't yeah. recall anything. But the last accident I got into, which was, like, years ago, all I remember seeing from that accident was a fender. I saw the guy's fender hit my car. I mean, there were, like, 20, mo 20 scooters in yeah, front yeah. of well, me. you got crushed on the BMW. Yeah. You know. The guy came across four lanes of traffic and hit me, and all I remember seeing is... A fender, and then waking up on my back, and I mean, well, I had a concussion then. That was when you had your slash two. Yeah, yeah. no, it wasn't. It was a it was a pre slash two. It was a pre slash two. Okay. Yeah, it was a four piston or four four uh, ring. Yeah. yeah. Piston on those, but um, yeah, that was my favorite bike too. And yeah, that was that was the bike. Kevin, that was Kevin taught me a lot of stuff on that bike. <laughs> Kevin Moore, yep. you're the best. Yeah. And I, oh, yeah. I mean. I, I have so much respect for Kevin Moore, and yeah. he's he's a great guy and super cool. Yeah. That when I first saw you on that bike, I was like, "God damn it, that's a cool fucking bike!" Like, at, why is he not riding his passport? I know why he's not riding his passport because this is a cool fucking bike. And, and then the then he got hit hours later. And the purists hated that bike. Yeah, I mean, I was like a they, they hated me because I, I love the like the twenties, and yeah. it was like yeah. I made it like the like a scalloped. Uh, pearlescent. It was an black, Art Deco bike. And, yeah, it was. Yeah. It was with red pinstripes, and it was. To me, it's just it was my bike. I just yeah. liked it like that. I mean, it wasn't gaudy, no. but it wasn't. But I love pearlescent paint. And what year is that bike? It was a '59. '59, right? And yeah. What I think was funny is that you see a lot of everything. You know, I, I got a I got an R50, right? You see a lot of those. You see you see a lot of certain bikes. But in town, the only 59 we kind of ever saw around was yours. That, that was it. There's another guy running a black one on the east side. But they're not thick on the ground here. You know, they had Husky megaphones. And, and that, those things were, and you, can, you can't find them. I mean, they were real. They were yeah. original, like, from that era. And it was just, a, that bike was fun. And it was so much better than, I, I mean, I don't, I like that whole, I like those bikes. But I like R50s way better than R60s. Yeah. Because it's, I mean, the R60's got a little more power, but the R50s are more balanced. Yes. And what about they, fuel they don't mileage? Vibrate as much. What about fuel mileage? <laughs> yeah, it's better than anything you could get. So. <laughs> Steve's ultimate qualifier. You know, it was a great bike. It had plenty of power and everything else, but the fucking mileage sucked. And those bings, though. I mean, those <laughs> side bowl bings and with the ticklers and. <laughs> it's very. I mean, that was my R50. The same thing. You know, yeah. you got to you got to pump it until there's gas on the ground, and then you can try <laughs> to start it. The the funny or the not funny thing looking back at this, the the odd, funny odd thing is that I know I expected your motorcycle. This is a Honda Monkey that we're talking about. I expected your bike to be in the shape of. A Z, maybe, right? Like, like no two parts were pointing the same direction. Like a pretzel. At all. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. A Bar Bavarian pretzel just, just twisted to fuck. Well, it was. I mean, that piece of shit was so fucked up. I heated the frame up with a torch, and <laughs> I had to fucking... come along? We used the come along, come along? all the fucking Car shit. Carlyle. I mean, He's like... a tractor. I, I feel sorry for the son of a bitch that ended up with that bike. <laughs> Well, oh, I sorry, Chris. I definitely took all the bad luck out of it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you did. That bike doesn't have any crashes left in it. But it, but it was funny. It's like, I wish I, I wish I knew what happened, but I don't wish I knew it happened because 
I think it would be like hard to watch yeah. what happened. Yeah. But it was funny because it didn't look very damaged. I mean, it has a dent in the tank because the pressure put on the... I've put bigger dents in yeah. tanks at fucking band camp at goddamn mid-Ohio. That bike looks like it's had it had a five mile an hour parking lot. Oops, not that you nearly it, died. It must have landed on me. I mean, That's I don't imagine I that it must have landed is. on me. Cause, well, yeah, you, you it, broke the bike's fall. Both of the mirrors were pushed straight yeah. forward and ripped off. Yeah. And almost, I, I, I think that's all your ribs. I mean, I'm yeah. imagining you flying through the air and hitting a ditch like mm-hmm. this, and then somehow like getting a whiplash thing yeah. or something. I don't fucking know. Bike went in first, but you came in shortly after. It's just the, it's Chris. not the crash, it's the fast stop at the end. <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> Steve had a monkey on his back. A moment of a monkey on his back. <laughs> but but the, sad, the saddest part of the story is now that monkey has Chris on its back. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that monkey can't yeah, win. Yeah, the monkey lost really <laughs> badly on that whole scenario. <laughs> so, um, but I have to thank my wife. I have to thank all you guys for being, you know, supportive of no, me. No, you got to thank your wife again. And- and again, I know. And wait, by wife you mean John, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shop bitch. I was just like, pull the plug. <laughs> pull the plug. I've got a DNR here. I've got a DNR. The ink is still wet. <laughs> well, that's funny because I do have a DNR on me. I know. And we talked about this. And then I was wondering, like, why am I still here if I coded three times? Yeah, so I don't know if apparently it, three people did not follow your fucking DNR. Well, but then they say, but then I was asking them about that. I'm like, well, you know, I'm not supposed to be resuscitated, right? Because I always figured if I was, that's not how it works. No, but it doesn't work <laughs> like that. I mean, if you're if you were like right. old and like yeah. if you're dying, then but it was a trauma. So I guess if they, they think you got a fighting chance. They're not going to yeah, look at the DNR yeah. and walk away. If well, <laughs> I think the DNR is only if like the machine is the only thing keeping you going. No, well, they kept yeah. me going because they charged me seven hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Uh-huh. So. Yeah, like because don't lose morgue, them. Payday's coming. The morgue <laughs> wasn't ready for you. The billing department wasn't done yet. Yeah, they're like, ching. That's all I heard. You know, that thing's going beep 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 beep, and then the other noise is cha ching cha ching cha ching cha ching. Every fourth beep, it yeah. just goes ka ching. Like an old gas station. <laughs> ding, oh ding. man. Yep. Oh, that's funny. And, and then I had the ambulance chasing me. Right. Instead of the ambulance chasers chasing the ambulance. Right. Yeah. Because they charged like 7500 bucks to drive me down to Albany. Because they, they asked for a helicopter, but the weather conditions were too bad. Should have called Uber Eats. Well, that fucking bill would have been good. Yeah. yeah that was like, right? they said it's yeah. 50000 bucks for a helicopter. Yeah, it is. And so, that's why it was 7500 for the van. Yeah. yeah. But they drove me down there, and then they, the like the insurance was like, it's twenty. Two hundred bucks. Yeah, I pay them, and they're like, "Thank you for the twenty two hundred bucks. You owe us the balance." <laughs> so you know, you have all these bills, and yeah. you're you're fighting with the worst part is fighting with the insurance oh, yeah. company, and and then not being able to wipe your ass. You That's know, the insult like, to injury part. Yeah, and then the first day you could do it, you're like, "I'm I'm whole again." Or like the first day, like <laughs> all these things yeah. that you don't really think <laughs> that you don't think <laughs> like first, are worthwhile, like. Yeah. Standing up and pissing. Oh, yeah. It's like the first day, it's something you never think about. But when you can't do it, it's like you're you're not a person anymore. That's the greatest motivator. I've been on my back from motorcycle crashes, and you're pissing into a goddamn urinal. Oh, I can't do it. And you're just filling up that damn thing. And no matter how good you get at it, there's always that risk, man. There's always <laughs> that risk. And the futon in the living room, right, that, that, has, that became my home for about eight weeks, that first time where I was like, I'm going to make it, there's three stairs. Because I live in a ranch house. There's three steps from my living room up to the main floor. I can make three steps. I'll, get, use, I'll go up backwards on my ass. And then I'll get into the bathroom. And I'm going to have an honest-to-God pee. <laughs> an honest-to-God pee. And then you turn around and you say, fuck it, I'm here, I'll shit. Right? Because you can. That feeling of wiping your own ass, that feeling. Dude, the day I had my hip done, yeah. they brought me that thing that you're supposed to piss in on yeah. the bed, and <laughs> yeah. I couldn't do it. I yeah. hate those things. Yeah. And so she was like, I was like, what do I do? She goes, well, if you really want to do it, if you really had to, you can get up and go to the bathroom if you can take the pain. I was like, no problem. Like that, you do, you're going to let me? Yeah, I was up. Get, I didn't challenge care. accepted. Yeah, fuck yeah. But Ping it, is important. But it's so it's amazing. It's like the the steps you make and the progress you make. It's like every little thing makes you feel better and better. And you thank God every day that that you're 
still alive and you could see your kids and do all that stuff and it's like the first time i got in there in the rehab two people had to carry me i couldn't get up it took two people to lift me into a wheelchair like all this other shit then you go through therapy and slowly like in two weeks you go through intensive therapy for like two weeks and then the last day it's like i stood up out of the wheelchair pivoted and got into a car i'm like holy shit you know it's like i was an invalid but i still can't you know i couldn't walk for 16 weeks because i was not weight bearing but then you just thank god that you have friends you thank god like my wife <laughs> you thank god of all like the food that people bring you it's like everything is so much different yeah. and you think why why did you get saved did you, know, you like, have like, um when i first saw you you had a cage on your one hand yeah, you I were pinned a, out. So yeah, you were, I had pins in yeah, my you were wrist. Pinned out in your right hand, right? And I had a, a cast or like a boot thing on my right or my left. Was leg. your left hand free? Did you ever have both hands? No, my left hand was free. Left my hand right was hand was messed up. Yeah, the Peter beater was messed up. They, well, I'm left-handed, so yeah, you're left-handed. Got that so. going for me. Oh, that's, <laughs> the, the Peter was the best thing in the world. Yeah. The Peter beater was just fine. <laughs> <laughs> you're laughing about that one. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Missed, bitch. <laughs> but then, luckily, the the nerves are coming back. So, yeah. I mean, I could finally start. I couldn't feel anything in my hand, so I thought. You know, so much hey. for being, never being a mechanic again. Well, this stranger, you didn't have to sit on it anymore. You could just do it. Yeah, but the problem is you can't feel anything, but you can't control anything either. <laughs> so it's like, it. sure, it's the stranger, <laughs> but it's somebody who's never even never even been taught how to do it. <laughs> just, just, just slap at your dick with it's, it and hope that you just get lucky. It's the mentally challenged stranger. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> they could wipe his own ass but he could jack off all day long right. exactly. <laughs> which, which honestly I, you guys know in this podcast for years since we started recording I said that, that you may see me wearing you may see me riding a motorcycle without a helmet I, I, I guarantee it anybody in this room you've seen me riding a motorcycle without a helmet my customers remind me about it all the time but you will never see me riding a motorcycle without gloves and the reason for that is when I'm recovering in the hospital, there's going to be things I can only do with my hands, <laughs> right? And I'm not going to want to deprive myself of the one joy in life I might have. So I always wear good gloves when small, I ride. Small, very small joy that you have. Hey, 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 hey. No, that, that's I'll beat it like it owes me money. <laughs> that's fine. The, uh, but, well, I didn't, I think I had, I don't, I'm not sure if I had gloves on or not. Yeah. I had a helmet on. Yep. And that was destroyed, and my wife threw it away. So I can't, there's no evidence of what happened, because she threw it away. They gave her, like, my, they gave her my helmet, and she just said, this is right. bad karma, and she right. threw, threw it away. Threw it away, yeah. And then the coat I bought off Pete, that air stitch, yep. was the coat I was wearing. That was... Oh, you were wearing the stitch. Yeah. Oh. But I didn't have pants. I had shorts on, I think. Yeah, we all know. Well, of course you had shorts on. No shit. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah, the sky's but, blue. Yeah. But they. But that's another thing I remember. They cut my shorts. They were brand new shorts. And they cut them off. <laughs> damn and it. And I was like bent because I'm like, these are brand new shorts. You're cutting them off. God damn it. You saved my life, but yeah. you fucked up my $32 short. Well, they had to cut your stitch off too, right? Yeah. Yeah, they, I don't know. I mean, they I had to have cut your stitch. Off. I don't There's know. There's no getting around it. You got a back injury. Yeah, yeah. They, they cut that my, shit into ribbons. My wife's phone took them hours to get through that arrow stitch. That's though. what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, I'm like these assholes at the these assholes at the his, ER. His, jaws, jaws of life. His ribs, his ribs weren't broken. They just cut through them and they fucking cut the arrow stitch. <laughs> exactly. Off. <laughs> he was he was his ribs were intact as they tried to take that arrow <laughs> stitch off. They got but three people pulling on him with jaws their feet. of life, cutting it, <laughs> yeah. just crushing yeah. his ribs as they cut through it. <laughs> and my phone screen didn't crack. Wow. Well, but it was under the seat. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't on your body. It wasn't on my body. It was, right. It was protected under your seat. It was I actually can tell it was you, in the back. I had a little bag in front. Of the safest place to be in your crash was inside the monkey bike, uh, because it looks fine. Like the monkey bike looks great, and clearly, one hundred percent of the monkey bike's energy went into you the the other funny thing too is i've ridden those roads for ever ever yeah i mean really i i have ridden like i ride in the spring in the fall there's summer, no surprises whatever. for you on that road no and i've been on most every road up there i mean many times well kid said you you did like a 150 mile ride or 300 mile round trip ride the day before no, i was riding for 10 hours a day before yeah and, and so she just out. doesn't even think anything of it because i go out for 10 or 12 hours 
I ride straight like 10 or 12 hours on the monkey or yeah. on whatever bike I have. Yeah. Because I don't really care. I, I rode that wolf. I mean, I took my that wolf up there. Yeah. That bike was a blast to ride up there because it's like full throttle the oh, whole yeah. time. You know, it's yeah. just fun to ride a small bike. Yeah. I mean, like I always said, full throttle on a small bike's way funner than no. quarter yeah. throttle on a big bike. But, but uh, I've ridden there for 30, probably 30 years. And every time I ride, I think, I, I thought every single time that I'm going to go off the side of the road and nobody's ever going to find me. I, I had that thought for 30 yeah. years. I mean, I, I always thought that because when you ride up there, sometimes you don't see, like in the off season, in the spring or in the fall, you don't see anybody on the roads for like two hours. So you could ride for two hours and not see one Dude, other car. There was just a guy on the news today. He was found in Indiana in a truck. He went off. He slid off the road, and so there was like uh, the road was here, and there was like a bridge, like a small like uh, stream underneath the bridge. His truck went off and crashed down here, right like this. So like when people Nobody were driving by, it. you couldn't see him. Finally, five days later, he was surviving off rainwater that was coming down through the thing that he could lick and fucking because his whole body was stuck. And uh, two fishermen were like, "Oh, let's go a little further, a little further," and they were like, "What the fuck?" And they literally found him like five and a, it could have been you six days. The dude barely made it. The cop said, like, uh, where his bike was was not at all visible from the road. And he not crawled up. Yeah. Well, how'd they happen to find you, Steve? I I crawled crawled up and was sitting beside the road. He's like, I'm okay. An angel dragged me out of there or something. I don't know. know. It was an off-duty police officer. Huh. But in that area, like, so I remember when we rode out there, was it one of, like, the super mountainous areas where, like, if you were off the road, you could have gone down a cliff? Or was it I don't know where it was. And I don't think it was. I mean, I know it was, but it was by Long Lake. It was, there's a, like where we are, it was, is, you know, Lake Pleasant, but then you go to Indian Lake and then Blue Mountain Lake and then another lake, like Sar- but there's like Long Lake and then Saranac Lake, right. which is up by Lake Placid. And it's Saranac Lake. It, it, so should, it, should be, it should be on your, uh, it should be on your ambulance bill. I'll take ah, it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking we all should yeah. take a bike ride up there and just go check it out, yeah. hang out, yeah. drink some well, beers yeah, there. Sure. You know, I thought that'd be fun. Yeah. Steve, do you have uh, Google Maps on your phone? Uh, oh, yeah, it'll show it, you where. It would tell you exactly you where it happened. Yeah. They have your history. Oh, well, unfortunately, I spoofed my GPS. Uh, and I and I de-Googled my phone. So, so the black helicopters couldn't find you. Yeah, so... <laughs> No. So, I mean, really, they think I'm in Detroit right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you've been moving, well, not you. John's been moving a lot of your bikes, or are you out? You're, yeah, out, thank you're, God for John and selling it on Marketplace, because I don't have any social media. I don't. Yeah, you don't I really mean, exist. I'm a kind of a paranoid about that shit, but I mean, thank God for John. He took care of my plants. I have a small business on the side. I do wastewater plants along with my main job but this is my side gig and john took care of that for me while i was out my son helped me out a lot i mean i can't my family's been supportive you guys have been supportive you know like my friends dan uh came to visit me in the hospital a number of times and i really appreciated the the visits i mean i wasn't probably very good company because my brain was so rattled but you know John brought me donuts. He brought me Dairy Twist. I mean, thank uh, God for that because they were feeding me pureed food, uh, and it was so it sucked so bad. Like they would take chicken or whatever, yeah, whatever it was they made, they puree it and they have a stamp of what it is and they stamp it on the pureed piece of crap that they hand you. <laughs> so you could have some fantasy about what this was before they put it in the blender. And the grossest thing... Was it thing, in the shape of like a little chicken? <laughs> yeah, it was like, no, they, they, it was like a, uh, uh, like a kid stamp yeah. on top of the thing. It comes the out wor- of a replicator. Yeah. The worst thing ever is thickened water. What? Yeah. It is so disgusting. Yeah, so it's that's the, the most thing. disgusting yeah. thing. Yeah. And my, kid, it was, my kids tell me the story that so I'm half out of it. Yeah. And they bring me a glass of ice. They just bring me a glass of ice. Yep. And I'm eating this ice. And I'm telling everybody in the, like the nurses are coming in, <laughs> the therapist coming in, everybody like, he's coming in there. And I'm like, 
This is the best stuff ever. You guys got to try this. This stuff is awesome. And it's a glass of crushed ice. And it was and it was awesome because yeah. it was crushed ice and it was cold water in your mouth. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, and if, if you don't eat for a month yeah. and have nothing in your mouth yeah. for, except a bunch of tubes, yeah. you know, it's like... Thickened what? water is a real thing for people who have uh, gastric problems and people who have intestinal problems. It's so gross. And oh. uh, if you're if you're not sure if the if the doctors aren't sure if your stomach is intact, they don't want you having water going where not, water's not supposed to go. Uh, yeah, my throat was damaged. So because if your throat's damaged, if you have es- esophageal tearing, if you've had uh, throat cancer, uh, if you have uh, a tra- tracheostomy, uh, you may end up drinking thickened water and steve's not wrong what do they thicken it with well <laughs> some powder you pour in it i mean i've been telling ladies for a long time yeah it's, it's just, just thick water. water. <laughs> they put a protein mix in there or something? Uh, the best thing i can tell you is ice cold and they won't serve it to you ice cold they're gonna give it to you room fucking All temperature right, i gotta look this up yeah, i gotta see up. what's and in if it. you wonder why my voice is messed you can up buy it. which yeah. it is a little messed up yeah it's because they left they didn't trach me, which yeah. thank God they didn't. Yeah. But, but they, they left the vent in so long that they damaged my vocal cords, and yeah. then they said something. It was I have gran- <laughs> granulated vocal cords, or I don't even know what that is. It, it was but just like we were like, it was taking so makes. long, and we're like, when are they going to do surgery? When are they going to do that fucking surgery? That was the big concern. Like, here. oh, they're yeah. having a problem. And then all of a sudden, and they decided to fucking drain your lung. Right. And they wait. It was like three weeks of just we like. We couldn't believe how long. How how long are they going to leave him like this yeah, you were without fixing him? Like, like he's got a broken leg. He's got a broken wrist. He's got a cra- all this I'd shit. I never in my life ever heard anybody that was bagged for as long as you were bagged, right? So anybody who was on supplemental O2 um, that hadn't gone into surgery, and I was like, well, I can understand if they're waiting for him to stabilize before they get him into surgery, but <sighs> man, weeks is a long time. They had to wait till he got up over five hundred thousand before they wanted to. <laughs> you want to get a, uh, get, a half, get a half a million? Okay, million. start doing shit to him. He oh, rang the bell. Right. <laughs> Calm down over there, chief. Oh, I think we're losing him. We better yeah. do something now. Yeah, we're gonna lose our bank account. Pull yeah. the plug. Call in the building department, quick. <laughs> Uh, so that's that's something uh, profit loss right off. In regard to thick and water, you get two options: starch based or gum based. Gum based, yeah, gum based. Neither of those sound Did you appealing. Say gum based, because that's yeah. <laughs> show notes, Steve. Show notes. Right. 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 Put that in the show notes. If anyone would like to send any thickened water, yeah, to Cleveland Moto Podcast. We promise we'll make drinks with it. Sure. Uh, oh, no, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll really have PTSD if I, if, I, if I see a thickened water package. You know? uh, I made ice out of thickened water one time because I was just curious to see what the hell would happen. <laughs> um, it's not great. Was it gelatinous? <laughs> it becomes blah, blah, blah. slime. Yeah, oh. it's just not great. It's not the best thing in the world. So yeah, but the food. You know, when you start eating food again, and, and that was really good. Thank God for. Uh, I started out on Jimmy John's, and then I found out it was owned by the holding company that owns Subway. So I decided that no I'm gonna way. boycott all of them. No way. Those two. Yeah. They're in cahoots. They're the same holding company, I think, owns both oh, of those. My so I started going to Jersey Mike's, and thank God for Jersey thank Mike's. Thank God for Jersey Mike's. Yeah. So, I mean, I. You won't die from a shortage of fries either. You, you got to uh, try Charlie's Cheesesteak. Way it better than Jersey Mike's. Is it? Yeah. Well, I'll definitely try that because I love cheese. <laughs> it's steaks. up in Wisconsin, buddy. And yeah, I'll try it. The 50 pounds I gained <laughs> yeah, from not well, being able to move. Well, that's I mean, the thing is, when you can't move. Yeah. So I'm starting to lose weight, thank God. And but in the grand you know, scheme of things, a few lbs to actually be here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, hey. Yeah. yeah. But it's weird because it's like now I'm just deformed. Like my yeah. rib cage is so busted up. It's like you look at yourself in the mirror, and I, I actually lost two inches of height. Really? No way. Yes, I was actually two and a half inches. I was five nine and a half prior to instant instant. No, but I'm five seven now. I say he, he was he was six eight. Yeah, he was six eight. <laughs> now I'm five seven. <laughs> who's the, gram- who's the gram- grandpa from? Uh, oh Uncle shit! Joe. But that's two and a half inches from a few spines. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. So it's it's very it's very weird too because my inseam's shorter, right. and I don't know why my inseam would be shorter if they fused my spine. Your whole. <laughs> All of you is accordion. And well, I feel like I'm compressed. It's like a tuna can now. <laughs> I wish it was. <laughs> Probably scared his balls out of their four inches, though. Yeah. Well, that's another thing. My kid didn't know what a scrotum was. 
What? When I was in the hospital. We really killed him. <laughs> so I thought that was funny, too. That's was, hilarious. Dude, you got one. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you, never, you don't know you have one? <laughs> I was there when you were born, kid. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't have one, you wouldn't be here. So, <laughs> what did he think that what was holding his balls in? What did he? No, not him. It was me. It was like I was sitting in the... No, but I'm saying, like, but like, if he didn't know what a scrotum was, what did he think what it was called? He's never seen one that big. I don't know. No, like a gall- ball sack. I don't oh. know. But 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 it was but he funny. wasn't familiar with the term of art. Gotcha. Yeah, he didn't he didn't know what that the wasn't term, a term meant, so. It wasn't a term his parents used around the house growing up. Right. And another thing, <laughs> you have no dignity in the hospital, you and eventually, you, nope. you get to the point where you're like, "Fuck it," just like I'm gonna shit right here. Yeah, I'm you just, should. I mean, it's like you really don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah, when we were talking about urinating. I'm like, "There's a third option. Just piss the bed." Right. Mm. Yeah. But I tell you what, you should really. I mean, I was. I'm a very I like to thank, I mean, I, I am appreciative of anybody that helps me out. I mean, I really, you know, like anybody who does the minus, and if they give me a smile, I'm happy. You know, I'm like, just, three stars. No, I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm just saying that. Anybody, everybody said, what a nice man. He is a very, I, very nice anybody man. Anybody in my life, I like to thank for anything they do for me. I'm gracious to people. Except me. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's just that. I believe like, if you go into the hospital on day one, you should really fucking turn it up. I mean, just be the Antichrist. Give them, a, give them hell. Just really make everyone's life awful. Anything you do after that will be considered to be a good guy. And you, day one in the hospital, you get a free pass. Day one in the hospital. If you think you're the only guy to call 911 because you're not 911 because you're not getting pain management in the hospital, you're not. That's happened hundreds of times. But if you're a straight up dickhead on day one. They, it's okay. My buddy got in a fight with the dude. Yeah, he swung at her. He was yeah. he was coming. He was having problems with the uh, narcotic, like taking drugs, pills, and stuff. And like he got to go get dried out, and he was going through the DTs. And when I was a police officer, we had yeah, the hospital was in my patch, and uh, I can't tell you the number of times I got called to respond to the hospital for somebody I just delivered to the hospital as a result of you know an enhanced you know arrest and. When you see what those folks have to go through at the hospital with people like Steve who are having problems with, uh, you know, painkillers or. Uh, well, they're angels. I mean, I, personally, the, what they have to go through, it's like it's it's kind of in, like you feel sorry for them. But yeah. then they say to you, like, like somebody's got to wipe your ass. You're both right? in the Because you can't do it. Yeah. Well, I, that's what I've said before yeah. is, right. you know, like, we, work, we work at a shit plant and everything. Yeah. But guess what? Who's got, you know, who's got a worse job? A nurse. Right. I never have to stick my fingers up somebody's ass. No. I rarely actually ever touch poop. I have the most respect for the like that that profi- the nurses <laughs> no more than the doctors. I swear the nurses are the best. The nurses are the best. And they say and they're like the hospital We've seen under. this a thousand times. Yeah. Don't feel bad about it. And it's like but every time you still feel bad about it and you want to you know you you want to uh, it's a person who tries to help everybody else and you're in a position where you can't help anybody. And you're being helped. It's kind of a weird turnaround, right? I mean, yeah, you know, because you're used to being yeah. uh, you're used to being the hero, well, yeah. and now you're the zero. Right. So I mean, um, I mean, Pete was a fireman, and he know. I mean, he's gone through a lot of stuff where you have to help so many people. And I mean, I'm sure you meet a lot of assholes, and you meet a lot of good people, right? I for mean, sure. Yeah. So I'm just thankful for that. All the nurses I met were great. All the staff was great. The PT, the OT, everybody was great. And it makes, it renews my faith in a certain segment of humanity. Right. I mean, there's a bunch of shitbags out there. Mm-hmm. But there's a segment of society that, yeah. that's, just, that's what makes society great. They'll never I mean, get enough thanks. And, but, any, but anybody in any profession, in anywhere, can be that person as long as they're good to the people around them. So, that's all you have to ask. I mean, that's all you just be that person. So when and I'm you, done preaching, and well, I'm you, gonna I'll start abusing John now. Well, you <laughs> well hold on. Well, that's not fine. So you are you're getting rid of bikes. You sold John had helped you sell. But how many bikes do you have left? Do you have anything left? Oh yeah, I have plenty left. Oh, and I got a question though. I got a question back for the hospital. Yeah, I, I just thought about this. You said PT, but also OT, right? OT. Right. So did they have to go with John to the ice cream shop to know about your like what you do as an occupation? 
Like, did they have to send a team out to find out what you're required to do as your job? So mostly, they didn't know what to do with. I mean, the OT. Didn't he looks know up deep do. conspiracy theories. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's number right. one, most okay. important. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm just thinking about the poor therapist that has to go learn all this shit to acclimate you back to the society that you're used to. Let, let's say the OT Tin therapy was this. Did you ever see the movie Motel Hell? Yes, I have actually. Okay, yeah. so my OT therapy was like when those guys are buried in the ground and they put that color wheel up and then they break their necks. That was my therapy for <sighs> OT because they didn't know what to do. Right. There's really nothing to do. My hand is like this. I can't move it. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Like beat on my own head or <laughs> just chop at my dick? I mean, I don't, <laughs> there was nothing to do. Yeah, nothing you could do. And then they send you to speech therapy so they could extract another like 55 bucks an hour or $200 an hour or whatever. Yeah. And they're like, Today, we're going to eat with you. Oh, good. We're going to give you chopped food instead of smooshed food. Ah. And then they're like, whatever. And then the lady who's cooking the food's like, I want to marry Elvis so that I can. I'm like, he's dead. <laughs> you can't marry Elvis. And she's like, I'm from Puerto Rico. My dad cooked food. Now I cook food. I want to marry Elvis and a rich guy right. and get out of here. I'm like, more power to you. You're yeah. awesome. I mean, you're awesome. Your food's great. <laughs> but Elvis is dead. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was a big thing when you actually could eat regular food. Yeah, that's for a, a long deal. time. I had a hamburger for breakfast every single day. Because yeah. they would make you anything you wanted. Right. I'm like, give me a freaking hamburger. Jesus, that's all I want. And then, yeah. then my friends would bring me food, and John brought me donuts. And he eats a lot of hamburgers. I love. <laughs> I was gonna say, like whoever the dietitian is, is just like, no fucking way. There's no fucking way. We know what we're giving the guy. How's he putting on lbs? We know what we're feeding him, and they see John come in with an extra large fucking to go container. <laughs> no, so, so in ten years, if this happened, they'd be like. Give him 10 pounds of crickets. <laughs> so I'm glad it happened now instead of 10 years later. But, you know. Yeah, but the, but the, but the crickets have old base seasoning on them. So yeah. it's fucking delicious. Yeah. yeah. And they're yeah, crispy. It's like yeah, eating bacon. Crispy. It won't be crickets. It'll be cockroaches. Whatever. Yeah, we'll, we'll take that. Full-blown yeah. snow piercer. <laughs> if cr- yeah. Crickets are only for the, the rich people. Don't go to the back of the train. The, uh, yeah, but selling the motorcycles is, was tough at the beginning. And I want to ride, and I really, and John got, uh, worked on my, I have a, a TRX 125, mm-hmm. and so I was able, when I was still kind of like not able to walk real well, I started riding the TRX 125 around the plant, which was great. I mean, thank you very much for doing that. Mm-hmm. But then selling them, it's like Steve heartbreaking. Yeah, but it's heartbreaking, but it's, it's like part of your life. You just move on, you know? It's like you can't do anything about it. I think after we broke the seal and got some money rolling in, right. and then it came like, all oh, right, yeah, we sell that one. Well, let's sell this one. I still owe right, him money for an ambassador I haven't seen yet. Yeah. So, you yeah. know. It's, and it, it Did just, you get that, or you, oh, you didn't get it yet? I, I'll give you the money. I just, no, I mean, I don't. Right. I mean, I have no issue. Yeah. I mean. But you can, but, but like I was telling you, or what I told him, was yeah. like, any one of these bikes, if someday yeah. down the road, you get back to where you're ever going to ride again, but you probably won't. You could buy any one of these. They're they're not that yeah. hard, you know. Yeah. And but I'm keeping the Cubs. I mean, I like the I like the passports. Yeah. And I figure when the next pandemic X hits and we're stuck in our houses, I can carry <laughs> eight cases or eight fifteen packs of beer in, on the C seventy. Right. So I mean, yeah. I might as well keep that one. So. And even if it ends up being art, it's good art. Yeah, it's really I mean, good art. It's a fun bike to look at. She, my wife actually said I could ride. She doesn't have an issue with me riding the Cubs again. Okay. Which, yeah. I mean. Just the tip. Yeah. Just the <laughs> but tip. Right now, it's you. In the mail. It's promise. true. It's, it's in true. the mail. But really, right now, you don't really fill up to riding, right? I mean, you still no, have a little then, dizziness, balance. Yeah, I have a. Look, when I stand up, I get dizzy. And, yeah. But I think that's from the. You know, I, my whole life, I've had like. Slightly elevated blood pressure, and now every doctor in the world wants to stuff a pill up your ass. So, yeah. Yeah. so if you're lucky, that's the, the proctologist. Uh, that's, yeah, <laughs> pay extra for that. The uh, the one thing though is think about this: if you sell off all your bikes, there is a potential day in the future where you'll get to buy more. And right. looking forward to the idea of, I would I would entertain any of you or any listeners, to come in and sell my goddamn collection. 
because I really just care about buying bikes. I've decided I've had enough trying to sell them. It sucks. The hunt is more fun yes. than the kill. I oh, think, my but. fucking God. Selling a bike off is Dante's fourth level of hell. Buying a bike is pure ecstasy. Uh, the fact that they can both be involved in the same thing is shocking to me. It's striking. I spent seven hours on the phone today talking to people about the machinations, profit margins, etc., the organizational aspects of selling bikes. And that even when you're selling a bike and you raise your hands and yell, woohoo, we sold a bike, that that is just the tip of a very convoluted fucking chain of idiots, right? <laughs> and that you're like, well, that guy got a cut, and that guy got a cut, and that guy got a cut, but I'm the guy who did all the work, but they all got cuts. And if anything happens, that guy's going to come back on me and not on all the other guys who get the cuts. So. He's allowed, all those guys who get cuts, they are allowed to fail me as many times as they want and just go, huh, there you go. But if I fail them even once, oh, hold on, we're going to have to punish you for that. And it is a really, like, it's a crappy thing. That guy that buys a bike off of you that no-shows you four times in a row and then shows up with no money, no license, and no skill, if you, God forbid, one time tell him, you know what, fuck you, I'm not selling this to you. Oh, man, I'm going to burn you down on the internet. Well, you're half an idiot, you know? I don't sell bikes to half idiots. The, the worst was when I sold my... I was selling my R1150 RT. Yeah. Uh, well, my RTP. Yeah, RTP. Guy comes, got uh. his one suit, one zip up suit. <laughs> you know, like, I've had one of these. I'm great. I'm a great rider. Yeah. I have a F800 now. I'm, you know, I just want to get a bigger bike. If you show up in an Aerostitch romper, you are automatically, you clearly know how to ride a BMW. Well, it, he clearly didn't because he gets on it, and we were standing around the back of the building. He goes around the building, and that's, I don't, you know, I, he's, he was going to go for a test ride. Yeah. He comes walking back around the building, the side of the building. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we were walking around the side of the twin. Yeah. Oh, I'm saying it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he comes walking around the side of the building. He looks at me, and he's like, what did he, he didn't even say anything. He, he, he go, did wait. something in his car. He got in his car and took off. He, he was like, he goes, and my is, bike's laying on the side yeah. around the building, on the crash bar, and like we're standing, running, and we're standing there in like amazement. But he said something like, uh, "It was slow, and it just it just tipped over, just tipped over, too heavy. I can't pick it up. I, I can't pick it up." But he just took off. Yeah. But the funny part, you know what you forgot? When he got there, he was like, "He goes, well, obviously, I want to take it for test drive. I'm not some kid that's just going to drop your bike." That's exactly <laughs> what he said. Yeah. But the guy who bought it, we thought I thought yeah. the guy was going to die. Because he didn't even he didn't even test ride it when he came and gave me the money, he got on it, he revved it up, he stalled it out, and he got off and he's like, "Yeah, I like this thing. I'm gonna buy it." He came back with his daughter or something. Yeah, daughter had to bring him there because he had no transportation and a whopped out like S10 Blazer or yeah. something like that. And I'm like, "Oh, I feel bad for you, honey." This and I'm like, "This. This is your dad." I have my fingers crossed. He gives me the money. I get, you know, I go out, we yeah. go out and get the title. I bring the title Just back. Just make it off the property. And I'm like, please, I hope this guy makes it off the property. You don't know, I look, you know, whatever. He don't just got watch. out of jail or something. And he gets out of the property and he's gone. I'm like, oh, thank God. He's, you know, he, he made it. And we're talking to each other. This guy's going to die driving this bike. The next week, the guy's like, stud, like he's decked out, like new clothes, we driving saw, the we bike. We saw him like on he, the road. Yeah. Driving the bike perfectly, I'm like, now that yeah. that's somebody who like knew he he knew that he was like shaky, and he said he was shaky, and he was like, you he was cool about it. He was just very cool about it. And then that's in comparison to the smartest guy in the room who comes in and starts talking about it, saying how great he is, and he's a piece of shit. Yeah. So I mean, I have respect for the guy that bought it, and he's like, I'm gonna learn as I go. You know, I want to know about that. I want to know what went through that guy's head, like the other guy, the yeah. guy who dropped it. Yeah, like you got like, it's like he wasn't yelling at him. Like we weren't in like it's not like we were like big muscly guys. No, he all just tried to Irish goodbye. Like, yeah, like if he you was guys just, weren't in the driveway, you would have never seen him again. Yeah, yeah. If he'd have parked on the other side of the building, 
He's a ghost. Yeah, but I just can't yeah. imagine being that. Like, you know, shit happens. Deal with it. Like, you got to man up and be like, hey, sorry. Hey, guys, I, you know what? I dropped the bike over here. I can't get it's it up. for me. And, I'm sorry. And, Is and, the bike okay? I mean. Well, that's the thing. It had those metal bars. It wasn't like a plastic bike where it just crushed. Right. It had the two, like, cop-looking metal, you know, tip over bars yeah. and like when you picked it up well we got up, it was just a couple le- tiny little not it was even nothing, nothing. Yeah, yeah his legs walked him away from the crash but his shame put him in his car and out the driveway that's what well, yeah, uh, he didn't want the you break it you bought it yeah class, of course that's what you I said did. it was still running too at least you could hit the kill switch ah, for out loud. Yeah, no shit, like, right right but the, don't let it pump gas all over the neighborhood yeah the, like at the plant we ride around the mini bikes and yeah. like the old hand i have and stuff and the one summer help kid's really cool and he twisted it up. i mean he twisted it into the ground and i'm thinking well he was cool about it yeah. he said he twisted it in the ground yeah. i mean it's like it's something that we've all done that was doing Steve's something SSR. stupid yeah. Oh, so, was it? yeah so it's it's like that's cool just like own it yeah. If you do yeah. something stupid, own it. Yeah. Like burning down a barn and letting 12 hey, fire yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I own that, you know. So. Again, again, I was there. I don't think we burned down a barn. I think we deconstructed a barn. It was already using down. Fire. Right. First of all, <laughs> potatoes, most potatoes. Of it was in the ground. I. Yeah. So well, when the acetylene tank blew, almost blew up, <laughs> that was tell bad. Them, tell them what happened with your neighbor since you still own that house. Oh, and then the next, the week after, I was telling these guys, the week after, they were gutting the house that I sold to the, the property next door that I owned that I sold to buy the yeah yeah the new neighbor the new neighbor right. is doing a so rehab lit, on that house yeah they lit their pile of debris on fire oh but the house was still in my name zero tolerance so they sent me a, like a cease and desist oh, letter they sent and you like, a super duper fuck you letter yeah and I'm like what are you talking about. They said, we ought to come back to your property. Yeah, after and, the nine alarm fire yeah. you had last week. <laughs> and it was like, and there was so much foam. I mean, I have like, what, PFAS everywhere now. Somewhere, right. <laughs> Forever chemicals. Forever, yeah. right. There, more a, a- triple F was spilled at that barn. The, Every time it rains, it's just a dry spot <laughs> all the way around. The, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, what's, what's so fucking hilarious about that particular burn, uh, we didn't know there were acetylene propane tanks in the side there that was air compressor to us air compressors do act funny when you get them super hot and warm uh yeah, and that was an air compressor off of a world war ii that's what bomber. i was gonna say that, those were <laughs> o2 tanks off of world war ii bombers that were re- refitted to be air compressors it's amazing how much pressure they can take uh but what i thought was pretty interesting was there was a point when all of us degenerate I mean, we are all arsonists at hearts. We're all pyromaniacs in training. Um, <laughs> Five gallon. We were all, every single one of us, <laughs> at some point, when the, when the fire turned purple and green, we all went over and hid behind a very small tractor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was, I'm, I'm like, I'm kind of staying behind this tractor. <laughs> and the fact that you could fit seven assholes <laughs> behind a relatively small tractor and trailer. Big wheels, though. Stand right behind that stand wheel. Stand behind the wheels. <laughs> Because I was like, the noise that it made when it was burning. Yeah, yeah, that was a fucked up noise. And it was like, when the fire department showed up, we knew we were had because there was no hiding this fire. The fire went from being like, I think the barn might burn a little bit. I think the barn might might actually succeed in burning down. Literally trying as hard as we could to get it going. We were. We and had then a once it got going, oh, it was going. Every, everybody had a corner, and we were having a contest yeah, right. to see whose corner would burn to faster. See whose corner would burn faster? <laughs> oh, look, Nick's corner is burning really good. What's that funny sound? Yeah, oh. F- yeah. Phil throwing in five gallon cans of gasoline, just chucking five gallon. I was chucking in any paint can I found that was suspicious looking. I was chucking in any aerosol can I found that was suspicious looking. I was saying better in than out, right? I tripped and fallen over everything that day. John and I knocked down a main support beam using sketchy block and tackle work off of a tree and a tracker tractor. I melted a drone. Flying you melted through a the drone through the <laughs> fire a few times. So by the time this thing became self-sustaining, <laughs> we'd all really had enough fun with it. Yeah, we were all well past the point of being interested. And we were eating pizza while the fire. we were. We had literally <laughs> ordered in pizza, and the pizza didn't arrive until after the fire department. And it really caught kind of at dark too. It, like did. it was going really it good. Did. Like we fought that fire so hard to get going <laughs> that it's only justified it took nine different fire departments to put it out <laughs> well i correct you it was actually two fires because we had the barn yes. and then the whole pile 
Oh, yeah. So they actually had to do two dowsings. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. And they came out and, you know, one, I don't think we were dicks to them. I thought we were super sweet to them and being like, yeah, well, you know, we, you know, we were just taking this barn down and it got out of control. I had a permit. The, the pizza. <laughs> and he had a permit. <laughs> the pizza arrived just in time. The pizza arrived <laughs> and we're offering the pizza to the fire department because, you know, we just, you know, we, as far as we were concerned, it was self-sustaining now. We could order food. And the fire was taking care of itself. We didn't have to stoke it anymore. And we were hungry. And we were plenty hungry. But And then the, the <laughs> sad part was, after the fact, yeah. I still had to hire somebody to remove all the to debris. To take all this shit so away. So I might as well have just hired him in the first place to haul it all it away. It got so cold so fast, too. It was so beautiful and warm. And then, yeah. I'm yeah. freezing. Oh, the <laughs> sorrow set in pretty quickly. And the funny thing was, like, to be... To be even the most ridiculously overprepared firefighter in the world, that was like a one pumper, two pumper situation. The fact that the call went out and I took video of at least six different fire department's equipment it shutting went out down the entire street. A structure fire. Yeah. So as soon as it's a structure fire, yeah. then it became a big You know, all those guys were like, oh, we get the news to get Overtime. Gear. They're oh, getting yeah. overtime. They're yeah. getting paid. All those guys get paid when they go out on a call. Okay, so how does that work? If it's a if it's a fire that legitimately two pumpers, one pumper could put out with any problem whatsoever, and all these dudes show up from all these different departments, and all these dudes fucking do what they do best, which is roll hose and break shit. They're all charging lines all over. The- we had 20 goddamn charged lines on this thing. How does that even fucking work? Like, why does why would a company even volunteer to be like, let's get our shit dirty? Because it was a mud pit. And these guys are rolling these big, beautiful, brand new hoses through mud. I'm going to guess that where it was geographically, some of those departments out there don't see a lot of action. So they get anything that even looks anything like some action. They're like all hands on deck. And some of those guys are volunteers. So well, they're mostly volunteers. Like all, all the townships are like volunteers. They're volunteers, so. but they get paid when they go on a call. Because sure. the one guy, Jake works with us. He's one of the volunteers. He's one of them. He's one of them. Those guys. Well, they get very excited when they actually <laughs> see <laughs> very r- real fire. They were very excited, were too. Very excited. Yeah. In my hometown. <laughs> they were so excited. You know, who, he, the, the person who was starting the fires, and there was this big field. They call it Had the flat. Had to be a volunteer. It was a volunteer fire. Cashing they, in on it. Like it, sure. They just wanted to, they'd light it up so that they could get called out to go put it out. That happened to the entire city of Detroit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah it wasn't there. the smartest thing I ever did in my life. Hey, I will say this. We were all in, man. We were all in. We were in for a penny, in for a pound. You said you had a permit. We have matches. I had a permit, too. I know you did. <laughs> and, and apparently we all were impressed by that permit, but the fire department cared not one fuck about that but, permit. But then I found out the permit... Re- May, required you to burn it in a, like a three foot diameter pit. <laughs> I, guess I, I guess I didn't read the whole thing. You had a permit for a cooking fire. <laughs> no, but I had a demo permit. Yeah, you had a demo to, permit. To get rid of it. And I was just assuming that. If you hey, add a demo permit to a fire permit, you get a demolition by fire permit. We were demolitioning these are by, demo, these by are oxygen. Very, these are very simple Dungeons and Dragons rules. You just got to play by the rules. Man. We were oxidizing it. It was fun. It was cool. It was one of my. It was my absolute high water mark for that piece of property. I was like, "Man, Steve's onto something here. This is pretty cool." Yeah, uh, it was an interesting time. I mean, it was. Yeah. Fun. Oh yeah. And now I have a bunch of dirt mounds there, and John's right. going to drive over them. I yeah. have been. Yeah, that's. What I was going to say there's been no shortage of people driving over dirt mounds there. Yeah. Uh, what was funny was after the barn was gone, and we were riding dirt bikes back there because that became our impromptu track. Um, was occasionally running into things that would <laughs> yeah. appear from the earth. So, like, the earth will eventually reject things. So, like, we're it's doing something. Like a stitch. <laughs> yeah, we're like, yeah, we're just having a good time. Run, 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 run. And all of a sudden, I'm like, Moop, my bike stopped, but I kept going at 20 miles an hour. And I go back and look. There's, like, the business end of a shovel from 1914 <laughs> that, that just managed to push itself up out of the earth. And we'd been driving past it, fortunately, but eventually, I hit it, and which is funny because we trod that ground pretty damn good. And you had a company come in and, and excavate it and yeah. do all the kind of crazy shit to it. And then we still laid down fifteen, like tandem. We laid down fifteen tandem. We axles capped it off of, pretty good with some of ha- tailings, asphalt grindings. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fifteen. Fifteen yeah. tandem axles. Yeah. That's a. It's, a, it's pretty crazy how. F- one, how much fire there was, because there was a lot of fire. Old hokey and jokey contractors excavating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is pretty, I mean, in retrospect, looking back at that, um, I'm just happy we didn't get hurt. Uh, and I'm happy you're the only one that got fined. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't there. <laughs> from, a professional, from a professional standpoint. <laughs> Hensling's there, you know. It's most, like, most people consult their lawyer. You don't want to consult. If you, you know, you fire. go to a gun show and all these dudes are showing up wearing their old tactical army shit, their woodland camouflage, or they're sh- wearing up like their, their cop shit from the time they were security guard in 93. Um, but a fire is the one place a, fire ne- a fireman never wants to be identified. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's well, not like it will it never seems happen to be a free again. pass. It's not like, oh, oh, Look at these dipshits. Oh, wait. Hemflink's here. Well, <laughs> That's fine. He's got have, this. We've hired a fireman on scene. We have a, a you know a risk, a risk management yeah. personnel on scene. We're good. We're good. <laughs> uh, yeah, but we had a permit. I'm retired. This is what I do now. I just go watch fire. I just go watch barn burning. Well, I'm not doing anything like that ever again. No, it's fun though. Yeah, so, yeah until you do. Until, well, until, until I there's do. another building that needs to go away. So you said you have a plan now. You're going to move into. You're working on something now, huh? What are you working on, car wise or something? You said. Yeah, I have a couple. Um, I have my two cars that I always wanted. I mean, I had one before. I had an old. I have a BMW Bavaria, right. which I, I had a one with an automatic, but this one is a stick. So. Hey. And that was the first car I ever rebuilt from the ground up. I mean, I had the engine apart. I rebuilt the entire engine myself. I redid. The, I didn't do the transmission. I sent that out because I. That's something a professional should do. <laughs> but uh, I loved that car, and I got rid of it because it was an automatic, and I just hate. I just don't like automatics. Right. That and it was so funny because it, re- it took me a year to rebuild that car. I had. I had a double car garage and I had all the parts laid out on the ground, you know, on cardboard with numbers and bags and everything for everything. And so I got the car done and I parked it in the street when I lived in Euclid and I, my wife's car was parked right in front of it. And we, we lived right on the lake. This microburst comes through town. It shears off the telephone pole. The light from the telephone pole, the street light goes through my wife's windshield the telephone pole cracks off, impales the car, and breaks the rear uh, exhaust camshaft. Yeah. It goes through the hood, through the valve cover, breaks the camshaft right off, like breaks it in half. Her car, like the wires are laying on her car. Yeah. Her car is trashed. It's done. My, my 72 BMW is right behind it. We walk out there, and like everything's destroyed. Like trees are uprooted. You can't yeah. walk, go down the street. There's so many branches on the ground. It's like it topped all the trees. There's a like branches broke off and impaled themselves in the siding of houses. Jeez. That's how strong the wind was. And there's a beam of sunlight <laughs> coming down. Yeah, yeah. I kid you not. This sounds like it's fake, but it's not. My wife and I walk out there and she's like nine months pregnant. There's a beam of light. On my BMW, like, <laughs> like God protected this piece of crap, you know. And it's like I'm like, you should have parked in that space. <laughs> yeah. God, God is a German. <laughs> the Germans. <laughs> so I missed that. So it was hilarious. But I got another one, and so that's my project. I. How's my it? Goal is, is body in good shape and everything? Or for the year, I mean, all these things are totally rotted out. But this one is like it's got maybe no, it's his is okay. not rotted out. It has rockers. It has That's rocker amazing. panels. That's what I'm it saying. has shock t- strut towers. Yeah. It has yeah. it has a, a couple holes here and there, but it's really nothing. It's got a built big six hot cam Borel exhaust. Oh, oh. you know it's a four speed, so it's it runs interesting when it runs. Yeah, it's good. It runs well, I think. But it's uh, you know it's like old school points, right. you know whatever. Yeah. But um, uh, my goal like for my rehab and just like a goal that I have to because my body's getting You should rebuilt. take some days off of work and work on that car. <laughs> <laughs> Father's Day. I love dude. how Mechel Me- Fresh just gave me only, the gas There's face. only like fucking five guys that tell him that every fucking day. <laughs> I like to work. Steve, um, what were you saying about your vacation? How much vacation? Are you over that they won't 
I'm over accrued on vacation. By how much, Steve? Only like a twenty six week, weeks. Two weeks. Ah. Uh. <laughs> and I still have, and I still have and after being out for six months I still have a year and a half of time of I could time. use of sick time yep, three thousand hours you still have a year and a half of sick time <laughs> after using six months after using six months now do you know what I tell people who do the same dumb shit that you do the entire time that you were out using sick time you were accumulating more sick time I was right so I'd like to remind you. That even if you did time use up half. all, even if you used up all of your year and a half of remaining sick time, by the time you got done using that, you'd have three months of sick time. That's <laughs> true. Yeah. Okay. So you should have time. one month. I yeah. think fifteen days a year. Yeah. If it's fifteen like. days a year, yeah, but for hours worked, yeah. So. Use your sick time. Yeah, so any kind of time he wants to use. Yeah, exactly. I, I like going to work. I just love being at work. Yeah, don't work yourself until you're dead, and then you're That's like, "What I want to do? Yay, I'm retired. I get to go be a burden on everybody else." I'm Steve, never retiring. Is that one of your benefits? Huh? Is that one of your benefits at work? Yeah. Not if you don't use it. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> This, I like here's a guy who work. works for the fucking VA telling you that. <laughs> I just like being there. I'm sorry. I like being at work. I How like, do your coworkers feel, feel like, about that? We're glad to have him there. <laughs> hey, do I bother anybody? No. Except me? No. <laughs> Except you. <laughs> Michael Fresh got hired, and everybody else that works there went, whew. <laughs> <laughs> He's now not afraid to, to poke that bear. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, it's probably I don't a good sparring anybody. partner for you. Yeah, yeah, it's probably it's probably better for all parties involved. Yeah, yeah. The I'm, dashboard here's a there's a pic, Jen's got a picture of the dashboard. Oh yeah, it's the most beautiful dashboard of all time. Yeah. I mean, it's it's it looks like know, a '60s spaceship. It's awesome. Yeah, it's beautiful, yeah. and it's like I had I've had multiple 2002s. Yep. And, you know, as much as I love the 2002... It was a very basic car. It was. But yeah. the Bavaria, to me... Fancy. And, and even if somebody would want to trade me for a 3.0 CSI, yep. CSL, I would not do it. The two-door that everybody wants and that... The Dave and Manny moonlighting car? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. you know what? Yeah. The four-door right. is a better car than the two-door. And it looks way better, too. <laughs> I, I, so. I'm not arguing with you. I absolutely love all that shit. That stuff's fantastic. And then I have a Land Cru- I have a FJ40 Land mm-hmm. Cruiser, and to, that was my second favorite car, just because I used to watch Perkin uh, right. yeah. uh, Animal Kingdom yep. yeah. with Marlon Perkins. Marlon Perkins Animal Kingdom. Yeah, and I, those were probably Range Rovers. That, when yeah. I think back. There were probably Range Rovers, but we need to zebra stripe that bitch. Oh no, that is yeah. the only way an FJ40 should ever be. You know, Jungle Larry's African Safari the whole way. <laughs> yeah, that should be one hundred percent with a with a tied off rope on the front bumper. Are you restoring it or building it? Is it going to be like a zombie attack vehicle or just a restored vehicle? It's not going to be restored. It's yeah. going to be a <laughs> grumpy sore guy's anal safari. <laughs> <laughs> As long as it runs. Yep. It's got a V8 in it, though, Wait. so it's got a transplanted. Just keep them rolling yeah. along, right? I thought the new nickname was going to be... Tetanus. Steve Knievel. Steve Knievel. Steve <laughs> sure. Knievel, yeah. For fucking sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's the whole thing, is when you think about the bone count in your crash, how many bones you broke, uh, it's... it's Sure. Well, I mean, well, you it, and I talked. You you did everything that he's done, except he did it all in one time. So that's the thing is, we were joking. We kind of looked at your yeah. your health record, and we were talking about various bones. And I haven't, so I didn't break all the bones on my right side of my rib cage, but I did break left and right, you know, onesie twosies. Yeah. And so, in a lifetime, fifty four years, uh, thirty of thirty five of that running motorcycles too hard. Um. The fact that you broke every single bone that I've ever broke, and more so, and you got no spleen, right? And I like my spleen. Uh, I wish I still had. But you did all of that stuff in one crash, including the titanium rod and the nail, like the the nail in the leg, the tib fib, um, Mm -hmm. all those things too, which you get bonus points for because they're actually literally putting metal rods where your bone marrow used to be. That's a fun thing. And then you, but you broke. Your spine. I broke my spine. You broke yeah. it lower than me. I though, did. Right? So I was L3, L4, L5. So where my, where I broke my back, 
in my back is fused. I have w- only one fused vertebrae, where you have five or six. I think it's three or four. Three or four. Know. Okay, but right. mine's up higher. Too. Yeah, yours it's, is much higher. Or yours is in the C's, right? The T. The right? T's. The T's. Okay. The th- thoracic. Yeah. Thoracic. Yeah. Thoracic. Yeah. So when we, you know, you start. But I can't even do that. that right. You know, like Evil Can Evil's kid had like twelve screws. And I only have 10. So, you know, I can't even crash right. I don't know. Do you really only have 10 screws in you? I, I think it's only 10, but I don't, you know, you look at the, the x-rays and yeah. there's just like the screws cage. and rods yeah. and bones and ladders. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. Shoots, and shoots and ladders. And ladders. So the, your back, so your back x-ray, that uh, bridge that they gave you on your back, that metal plate, you know, three, what is it? Three metal plates that we saw on your back. So there's two long metal plates and one short metal plate that you've got on your back held together with probably seven or eight pieces of hardware amongst them, right? And you look at that, and we brought up a picture of... J.B. Wilp. We, <laughs> J.B. Yeah. It's, we like, bought, it's like a we, broken back erector set. It is. It really is. And we pulled up a picture of Evil Knievel's back x-ray, and we held them next to yours, and it was fucking identical. It was the same exact x-ray. Uh, it was so... Clearly, the exact same break of your bike. Of but your did back. you see that picture of his like cremation? Yeah, and then that's what's left of yeah. him. Just that that metal. Oh, I made sure to show yeah. Kit that erector set, that picture of his post cremation erector set, and be like, "This is exactly what Steve has in his back." So if you ever have Steve cremated, this is what you have to look forward to. Oh, I'll put uh, that up on the mantle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. yeah. Turn it into a beer koozie. Oh, I think that I think that should absolutely be a, a shift linkage of some <laughs> well, sort. My kids, my kids are getting custom purses yes. made out of my skin. <laughs> like in, oh yeah, all, all that the money, I all have. the art that you've got invested in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're gonna have to call a very special taxidermist. Yeah, who's probably German. I was gonna say, call Steve Stassi. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could probably start working on that for you right now. <laughs> oh, that's off color. That's uh, here. Smell this rag. <laughs> Does it smell like chloroform? Uh, well, when you talk about <laughs> not the, the trip again, what you're going through <laughs> now, right? This period, uh, you've got to keep up on the physical therapy. I know it sounds crazy because you've been, you've been through so damn much. Uh, I know, I know. But so there was a point after there was a point after one of my crashes, my my leg crash. Because I had a compound fracture, tib, fib, the whole deal. And there was a point during my recovery where I could actually go out and run two miles, uh, which is pretty good. Yeah. And so I could go out and I could run two miles. But then, fuck me, man. I don't know what the hell it was. But I just backed off of that. And I backed off of it. And I started being like, ah, you know, I don't know. My, foot, my foot's not right. My ankle's not right. Something's not right. And I backed away from it. And I started favoring it. And I, I did. And I'm going to tell you right now, if I had to run across the street because somebody's house was on fire, I'd have to stop for a break. Um, I can't. What, anymore. to get more gasoline? Yeah. There it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Depends on the burns. Depends on the burn. <laughs> but the flexibility is the biggest problem. Yeah. So the doctor already told me that I'm, I, I've lost like 50% of the, the range of motion. But... I, I, I think the biggest thing for me is I just use it mm-hmm. for everything. And it's like struggle. Like John and I were working on one of the Simbas. Yeah. And, and it's like he, we pulled it off and we pulled the carb off and we did some stuff and it still wasn't running right. And then he went to go get some parts or whatever. And I'm like, I have to do this. If I, and as hard as it is, because you can't feel anything with right. the fingers and it's like they, you don't have the, range of motion to like turn a ratchet and all that other, or hold a wrench but while he was gone i took the carb off i cleaned the car i mean thoroughly cleaned the carb did some stuff and and i and i got it kind of back in and then john helped me get like finish putting it in we were doing some physical therapy yeah right. and that's so exactly to me yeah. that's OT. just the accomplishment that's of OT. being able to pull a carb off and put it back on and get it all done like yeah. just do that that I mean, he's okay if it's like a cage hunt like that where right. you just kind of set him up for it. I mean, but he never really was that. <laughs> well, I, I mean, but you just, have to always have to. Have, you know, I know I've always sounds, had to have to do it for him. It sounds half weird, but like, yeah, thanks, and uh, then I'm glad you cleaned it up when you're done. <laughs> uh, 
I, t- I shouldn't have done it because I, I was at a better place. I was at a better place 16 weeks after my crash than I was a year after my crash. So I had managed to PT myself back to the point where, you know, they say like, hey, look, professional athletes have the same break that you have and they're back on the field five weeks later and they have a five-year career after that. And that $4 million contract makes that worth all the pain, suffering, and drug abuse. But um, you don't have that. I did. I, I, I really did. Man, I fucking wish I would have stuck with it. The PT, that is, right? The ribs are what's holding me back. Yeah. Because, so I've got, I went to PT and everything's good. I mean, everything was fine. But the more I did, the more my, my ribs are all floating. Mm-hmm. So the more I do, the more, I mean, it's not like a muscle or a range of motion where you can, you can work it and it gets better when you work it. It's like every time you, I use... Like I pull or I do something, twist or pull, my ribs get out of place again. So I just feel like I just need to give you a really good bear hug. Ah! <laughs> no. <laughs> and he'd get four punctured lungs. Mm. <laughs> and that might be in the future. <laughs> but but that's the problem. Like so at night I Broken lay down. Ribs are no party, man. I could finally lay in my side. Yeah. And I could lay on both sides. And when I wake up in the morning, I feel great. Yeah. But at the end of the night, you know, the ri- if I do anything, because I have to do, like, s- clean out returns, and that yeah. sucks. And, like, these small plants are the biggest pain. In the- like, the smallest things are the biggest pain in the ass. Like, the big plants, way easier. Get used to the pain in the ass, brother. You're a power bottom for the rest of your life. Yeah. The big plant has five people working. <laughs> the little plants just have you. That's solo. <laughs> yeah, so I guess that might be the reason why it's... So right. tough. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Many hands make light work. Yeah. Because I'm the puppet master at the other plant. <laughs> right. Yeah. You just get to sit in a powered wheelchair and make orders. <laughs> Fetch me this. Bring me yeah, that. But, but I, you know, I don't. He's feel, more like the cer- ceremonial figure. <laughs> but, but I, seriously, I'm Emperor good. of Japan. <laughs> After the war. Hey, if he's here, nobody else has to do it. I'm going to have that SCADA system call you every single minute of every single hour. Okay. We know that's never going to happen. It can. <laughs> okay, I got a question for you, and this is actually back to the topic at hand because this is a thing. You, we talked about, had you not crawled your ass up heroically with the power of divine intervention, angels, what have you? Uh, Nazis. I think it, Nazis or a group of a group of raccoons who went, not yeah. our fucking problem. <laughs> Drag them up to the side of the Get road. Get them out of our house. <laughs> we don't want that yeah. rotten there. Yeah, you always of- you always be a zero. I mean, hero to me. <laughs> so. However it is you managed to get back up to the road, there's, we have to entertain the thought that that might not have happened. And, How and do I would have f- died. Well, maybe not, though. There are technologies that you can buy today that for a couple of bucks, and you might even have one, um, where you can put something on your jacket. A life alert. Thank you. A GPS system. We have two-way GPS messaging now. Um, there I've are many different monkey companies. and I can't get up. Yeah. He yeah. would just hack that and turn it off anyway. Ah, but that's the good news about these, though, is they're, they're Steve compliant because they're off until you turn them on. But when you press that button, it could send a message out to somebody you care about that says, hey, I'm having a problem. This is my GPS location. Uh, you can even set it where I'm not going... Uh, if I don't press this button... In two hours, it's going to contact my loved one. So if I'm upside down on the side of the road not breathing or whatnot, um, they're going to get a message about it. It's going to give them my location. So there's active and there's passive, right? Now, some of the phones even, if you have your Apple device or whatever, and you smash it on the ground hard enough or, you know, you do things like race motorcycles and fall down or ride the Maverick at Cedar Point, the Apple device will contact 911 or the person of your choosing. The watch will. I think the I watch does that. Yeah, I know. I've, I've had mine alert uh, emergency services when I rode the Maverick at Cedar Point. <laughs> That's how you know it's a good fucking ride. Um, the good news is, though, apparently it happens a lot because the, you know, the response to it was, we see you're at Cedar Point. Are you enjoying the rides? You know, kind of thing. But that's a thing that exists, and it's not even real expensive. Well, the, some of the new BMWs have that built into the bike itself. Exactly. Too. Exactly. Right. There's an accelerometer in there. If you know there's a sudden deceleration, negative mm-hmm. acceleration, it will trigger that. Mm-hmm. And if you, it'll, they'll prompt you once, like 
is there a problem there? And if you don't say there's no problem, right. um, then they assume there is a problem. Yeah. So what is that? What do you think? What do we think about the idea? If you would have had a little beacon around your neck or on your uh, jacket, on your you know, arrow stitch, if you'd have had a little block, block there with a battery in it that lasts for two years and you just gave it a mash, I need help. He'd be just like Grandma. Fell in the bathtub, had the life alert, and didn't press the button. I, 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 I just, don't want to be wait. a bother. I'll just wait. <laughs> I'll just wait. I, I, I don't think a passive device. I mean, in that right. respect, I think a, a you'd have a to man, make it a, 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 a passive device would be better than a manual device because yeah, because you may not be conscious, right? And like I said, I always had this thought that this was going to happen, and like in the back of my mind, every time I rode there. I had the thought that I would crash and never be found. And I mean, in passing, because everybody's invincible until they're not. Correct. So I've taken a lot of risks. I've ridden, I've ridden my gold wings on ice. I've, you know, I've gone down a number of times on black ice. I've done, I've taken chances. I've ridden too fast. I've passed cars that I should not have passed. I've, you know, gone around bends way too fast and maybe gone and by that he means like 20 <laughs> <laughs> well i mean i'm a very conservative rider i mean everybody knows that i'm really safe but it's yeah. but at times i've done things that that are against my better judgment yeah sure so i i think that maybe when i had the first when i had that thought the first time maybe it was, and now that the technology was available, maybe it is a good idea to have some. If you if you know you're going to be in an isolated area, that you really have no hope of being safe. Well, that's I mean, what if people don't know what it's like up there, which I didn't until we went and rode with you up there. Like you're you're talking, you can go 50 miles and not see another house of anything, just trees and road. Like so, right. it's, it's easy. Like if you literally you got really like what people don't understand. It's like, we don't know where you went down, but if it's generally where you're riding up there, I mean, there's 30 miles between people seeing anything. Like, when we went, when we ran out of gas, you guys had to come back, because I, I would have had to walk 20 miles, or Dan, you would have had to walk, what, 30 miles to get gas when you were well, up Well, you were at the crack house? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one house, the one house that he finds, yeah. the, the meth house. Yeah. I think it's <laughs> meth now. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Pretty sure it's Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I was really was surprised. In, uh, I couldn't believe how little there was up there. Like, literally nothing. So no, there is nothing. That's what I like about it. It's like, it's peaceful and isolated, but that adds another factor of, of uh, danger. I mean, what happens if you had a blowout? What happens if you just hit a, like, like this summer the, with the rain? They, uh, roads in New Hampshire and Vermont and New York actually washed out. And there was like, there's one way to get to, there's like one straight way to get to a place and the other way to get to it is 200 miles out of the way or you, so you have to around. ride you have to ride an extra 200 miles like you could ride 50 miles to get someplace but if that road would go away or a bridge was gone it would take you 200 miles to get back to where you started yes, and so i mean the reason i know this for a fact was yeah. because i rode was riding north and i was going up uh, i think it was 28 or one of those roads and the INS was out there with these carts with machine guns, and they were pulling over everybody going the opposite way, really? heading south down yeah. that road. So I'm like, fuck that. I'm not going. They're not going to stop me. Right. I'm going to go the other way. I'm like, <laughs> nine o'clock at night, 10 hours later, I made it back to the house because it took me so long to go the other route to get home that I was like, well, I'm not smart. <laughs> no, you're stubborn. I don't think they're looking for you, Steve. <laughs> no, but I, you know, I mean, when you're overly he paranoid, he didn't want to have to say I'm an American. <laughs> don't make me do it, man. No, I was saying <laughs> America. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, but so. that's why I know it's so. It takes so long, and like to go from where I live or where my house is to Stowe, Vermont, to go there and back, riding. As fast as you can, twelve hours. Okay, Jeez. All right. Yeah, that's that's something, man. That's that's right. Amazing. You get up there and you're like, "This is beautiful. I better get home before all the critters are on the road." <laughs> man, yeah, no kidding. 
so when I'm looking at stuff like this, and I'm sitting there and I'm going, look, I, this technology exists for under two hundred dollars. Yeah, spot. That's, right. That's for the equipment. It's built right. exactly. It's built into my phone. It has right. car crash detection. All yeah. I have to do is turn it on. Yeah, and the, the for things like the Garmin in Reach, there are there is no subscription plan to that because what you're literally doing is you're just pinging satellites, right? You know, it's two way communication with satellites. Um, other stuff like the spot, you're going to pay for a small monthly fee. They have this thing on you, and then you establish the parameters. You know. If, if I don't press this button, call somebody important. See, and like us over here on the East Coast where we don't have like a lot of desert riding and stuff, yeah. you know, a lot of guys don't know about this. But like out west and yeah. places like that where they do a lot of, you know, just actual adventure riding, spots are like, it's like having an inflator. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just something yeah. that you have. 12 bucks a month. Yeah. 12 bucks a month. And then whatever hole you fall in. They find you. They can find you. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like if I ever ride again, which yeah. I mean, I may, may not. Yeah. I mean, it depends. But hopefully, if I ever ride hopefully again, nobody, nobody, hopefully yeah. you don't get influenced by a bunch of guys sitting around. There. Fucking peer pressure, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, but but I think I will ride. I I think I will not ride alone again. Mm-hmm. That I yeah. will ride in a group right. because, I mean, not that it would have changed anything, and there might have been five guys piled up at the ditch. Yeah, oh yeah. No, I mean, I'm not. I mean, I don't. I don't wish that on anybody. But I think that that at least. If you're if I if you're getting tired or if you're doing something wrong, somebody's going to tell you that yep. that you know you're not riding correctly. Or if something happens to one person right. on the road and they have an issue or you break down or you lose a tire yeah, dude, or whatever, if, we're, if there's you got four another of us person. on the road, yeah, if there's well, four of us in a group, three of you guys can blow the turn. Right. I know you'd be loath to use something like right. this, but I mean, we use Life Three Hundred and Sixty right. because we have a daughter and we like to keep track of each other and. Mm-hmm. That like tells you all kinds of stuff, and there's driving, monitoring. You, you can do it, but that's exactly the opposite. It's, that is the exactly thing that want. Steve will never have. Right. No, but, <laughs> but I'd rather the, just be with a person. I mean, right. I'd, I think, like I said, I'll ride with other people. Yeah. Well, and here's the other thing too. So, like, um, I just found out that it should show up in two weeks, but I ordered us all tourniquets. Yeah. So I think if you're riding with people and you have a tourniquet right. in your thing, yeah. any kind of a thing like that, like you can, unless it's you know head trauma or something, but like you know, no, no, I, neck tourniquet works. <laughs> like in Steve's case, he had you know a neck injury. You could. Right. Put it right around his neck and tie it real I'm tight. Man, no, man. but I'm saying, but like yeah. seriously, like they say, like if you have a person with you in a tourniquet, 90% of the time you can at least save the person. The know? fact that when when we were in the military, All right. the word tourniquet was never mentioned. In fact, it was such a fucking taboo thing. That was like the idea was tourniquet means loss of limb. All right. So we were trained, 11 Bravo, 19 Kilo. These are guys that are shooting people and getting shot at all the goddamn time. Mm. We were taught Tourniquet, last resort, absolutely last resort only. And all kinds of rules and protocols for tourniquet, right? Once you put it on, you never, never loosen it. That was one of the rules, too. That's, yes. That, that's gone away. And so now, where every single soldier, okay, every... So an AFAK, um, we're talking about a field first aid kit, right? When we look at now how every single soldier going into battle has not one but two tourniquets on them, mm-hmm. Okay as part of their basic loadout and knows how to use it. A cat tourniquet. I mean, this, we're talking about a military grade tourniquet, not this eBay, you know, right. Amazon shit that the, the stick's going to break the first time you try to use it. But you know what? Even if the stick breaks, it's still fucking totally useful. Yep. Your belt can be used as a tourniquet. The training now, and I've taken supplemental, supplemental medical training now for major injury. The tourniquet is now. The tourniquet is where you go first. Well, they said that the article that I read yeah. about that, you know, motorcycling and tourniquet. Saving lives. It said that uh, unlike other, like, you know, car, more than car, anything else, motorcycle accidents, yep. 90% of them usually could, like, the person could have been saved with the tourniquet because of the type of energy and injuries you yes. sustain while on a motorcycle. Have it, usually your appendages get hit or rut, and it's usually compound like Compound fracture. Yep, that yep. or a big cut. Like Haven't something we like all a, seen the video of the guy on the GS trying to pass a car? And there's a truck coming the other way. Oh. And he does not give himself enough space to complete the move. Mm. And we watch the impact on his camera, on his GoPro. And you see what's below his knee is twigs. Oh, yeah. That was okay? so, so good. It's, it's all gone, right? There is absolutely no doubt in anybody's mind. The only question is above the knee or below the knee, mm. right? But a tourniquet on that thing right now, right quick in a hurry. That's saving his life. Absolutely. You don't lose the blood. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. From... Artery, you know, anything that's near an artery, motorcycle people, when I tried to have butt sex with that 
Sherco. Yeah. Okay, with no seat on. Right. That injury that I had, that, you know, my 10 stitches were so close to my femoral artery, so close, that one inch, and it would have been a whole different kind of treatment. Yeah. John wouldn't have been able to spit on it and stick his finger in it and call me okay. Uh-uh. Um, it would have been ugly. I still would have tried. I know you would have. And, and I still would have, have flicked the meat at Steve. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Well, where, where do you yeah. put the tourniquet for that? Just leave it on your waist and yeah, uh, just go for just, it down well, fuck it, straight yeah. up. I don't yeah, know, just like me fitting into size 28 pants. I, I put all the booze on my face after that. I was like, <laughs> any rum, 151, whatever. I didn't drink it, but I was pouring it on me, just trying to get whatever. Yeah, oh. yeah it's, it's a whole new world. Uh, looking at law enforcement, military training right now, first responder training, uh, that tourniquet is something that that is being trained to people now, and people are becoming more exposed to it. So I do think that's great, and I... It was tough for me to embrace it because I've had so many years being trained against it. And to me, everything that was just in that field dressing pack was everything you'd ever need for anything. You know, give me that in a triangle bandage and we're all good, right? Uh, and it turns out, no, we could have been saving a lot more people. You know, you know what might make sense? Like if you have a group of guys that you're riding with, right? Mm-hmm. And like you kind of work out with, okay, well, this guy, he's got the first aid kit. I got this and that. It might not be bad as a group to take like a CPR class. or so, You know what I mean? Like guys that you ride with all the time. It's never, look, I'm, I've had 16 of the fucking things. Yeah. I'll go take another one tomorrow. Yeah. You, you don't, look, you learn something new every time you take one. Mm-hmm. And even if you don't learn something new, it drills it into your head better. I'm from the old 15 in two days, right? Uh, or five and one, 15 and two, and you, you know, you're doing math and algebra as you're pumping on people. Uh, 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 staying <laughs> alive, staying alive, uh, 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 staying alive. But stayin it's a good alive. idea to refresh, refresh your yeah. training. Are the eyes the breath? <laughs> I, look, I've, I've ridden a lot of people's That's the chest. Tempo. Yeah. Nobody's ever lived, right? I've ridden a lot of people's chest. I pumped on a lot of people, they didn't live. Really? But it's a good show for the bystanders. It's a good show for the loved ones. I've seen a couple of positive outcomes. You have seen some positive? For sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I've, I've seen one, but it wasn't mine. I've also seen people with like their head cut off and there's, yeah. a, there's a do-gooder doing yeah. CPR. Yeah. On them. Yeah. I mean, that's an extreme example, yeah. obviously, but um, sometimes the CPR isn't... You're pumping it was, here and it's it squirting like a, Yeah, it was kind of like a squirt gun. Yeah, yeah. it's not good. <laughs> But I've I've had to do it five times in my You're life. And I've, blow in all five mouth. times Where? were all five times were <laughs> twice I thought I had a shot. The other three times were for show. You lost the patient. Here's something Just else. I never had him to begin with. Blowing hmm. in the trachea. Here's something else. If you're throwing together a first aid kit along with a tourniquet, get one of those quick clots too. It looks like a little sponge. Yeah. Comes in a shrink wrap package. It's time for those, me to bust it out. We brought a, a pretty decent fir- first aid kit that I put together. We brought one out a couple of years ago to the podcast. It's time for me to bring it out again. Um, it's also a good idea for me to take a lot of stuff in there and de-exit it because it's just aging out. Um, the Israeli bandages and the tourniquets are a good thing for anybody to have uh, because that stuff will absolutely save a life. Absolutely. And, it's, and we're talking about a $20 <laughs> kit. Like, it, the kit that I've got set up is maybe 25 bucks. Okay. What I was told from yeah. your incident with the Sherco, mm-hmm. also throwing a set of rubber gloves because that's where I was chastised that I looked at the wound, I tried to treat the wound, but I did not wear any rubber gloves and keep it sterile. I didn't chastise you. We already stuck well, know, your tongue in it. So. The doctor, <laughs> the, there were no doctors there. I was going to say. The doctors who were not there but commented the on it. The people who commented on it, who were medical professionals, who also were happy to stand back and watch you do what you were doing, um, sometimes medical professionals will stand back the idea of any liability or risk yeah. or whatever. They, oh, whatever. I get it. You know, they want to be a witness. And the fact that anybody after that said, hey, you know, you were given first aid and whatnot, but you should have got some rubber gloves. Okay. Little something about something. You could have handed them to me while I was doing it. That's yep. right. That is exactly right. You, you observe that. Nobody gets credit. Nobody gets a gold star for pointing out the problem. You fix it. You get a solution. Otherwise, shut the fuck up. Also, I mean, like, you know, you're not a trained medical professional. Like, the first thing you were like thinking about was, was helping commenting your friend. about the gloves. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. 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 I just thought I was going to be taking a look, quick look at his taint and see what was going on. Next thing you know, I'm flicking a piece of filling. Well, on the bright side, there's a drug out there that rots your taint right off. 
Well, there you go. Yeah, there's that. Uh, more importantly for me, the idea was... <laughs> it is an aside. I'm just going to throw that out there. I was just going to go past that. <laughs> you know, they advertise it like every five minutes on the right. thing. You're peritonitis is going to like rot off if you take this drug. Do you mean your perineum? Yeah. Peritonitis. Whatever it is. I don't so know there's what a it drug is. that you can take that rots away your perineum. You, well, it's one of the side effects. Is that it's your one taint? One of the side effects <laughs> is <laughs> that you no longer have a taint. <laughs> right. It's, so it's like it, osembic or something. Is it just a larger hole at that point? Like this what, is literally what? one of the. This no, I'm is one serious. Of the it's really gross. Oh, good god! It's like it's like uh, anal leakage. So, per- <laughs> what do you take a yeah, drug? I have anal leakage. Yeah, now. But in the '80s, we had Wow chips, and it were like <laughs> fat-free potato <laughs> chips. <true>. Alestra, <laughs> Alestra. Oh, but if oh. you you never trusted Careful, a man. fart, after what's that? that? What's that can? You never trusted a fart ever after that. <laughs> what? Um, yeah, we do need to have a brush up on our first aid stuff, and we should probably have. What's your Pete or one of our friends who actually is recently trained or more recently trained come in and help us with that? Because you're supposed to re up what every four years or so, eh. give or take. Yeah. I, it's been twenty years since I've been a lifeguard. We have so. enough. We have enough friends <laughs> in the industry that are first responders that yeah. are current. When was the last time you had to do anything? Tough. I know. Three four years ago. Yeah. Yeah, and the Chihuahua. <laughs> We've got the Chihuahua. <laughs> incident. We have some friends that are current. And that would be happy to come in and share a cocktail with us and give us a half an hour on some basic uh, field expedient emergency techniques. Uh, Pipe, but Pipe, yeah, Piper's a lifeguard. She can save you from drowning. There we go. Oh, yeah. I'm going to need that when I get my Suzuki wet bike. No, <laughs> never going to happen. The, uh, <laughs> but there's a, but yeah, I mean, that's a decent thing. We should, we should focus on that because yeah, Steve went in the ditch and any one of us could have gone in the ditch and ditches exist for all of us. Bitch in the ditch. <laughs> Fucking, we'll have it. The other thing too is he crawled out of the fucking ditch. Yep. And I'm still trying to put that together. Because yep. with his laundry list of injuries. Let's go back to the ditch too. Just say any one of us was with Steve. Right. Now you're in a pickle if you don't have a spot device, a messenger right. device of some sort. Because now you say like, okay, I got Steve out of the ditch. Or he got himself out of the ditch. Yep. Do I sit here and wait for him? My right. cell phone doesn't work mm-hmm. here. Do I go for help? Is it what's going to be when I get back? So if you do have a satellite based mm-hmm. rescue service, you can press that button. Yeah, yep. there's no there's no cell phone service up there. No, right. it'd be satellite based. So yeah. you need satellite yeah. based. Yeah. And then you're gonna hit the button, the capable person, while the other right. person's busted up, yeah. and they're gonna come back and say, What do you need? You're like, Yes, yeah, send the cavalry, man. Right. We, we got a problem here. Yeah. So well, well, I, I, got I think re- Steve yeah. needs a, an emergency hamburger. Ah. <laughs> so he, he can just toss it up on the road and that gives him incentive. Ah. And then when he gets up there, he'll be like Popeye, and he'll eat it. I'll eat gladly it. pay you Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, one as, of the times, as, long, as long as you can get there before the raccoon does. One of the times I crashed, all my friends showed up after I crashed. I didn't have any problem with people being there because they had plenty of witnesses. And, uh, but we didn't have any cell phone service right there, right? So right at the point of the crash, point of the impact, no cell phone service. So one lucky fucking contestant had to go off and make the call, right? And so I got, I got people around me. I got, you know, I got people who are skilled. I got, you know, oh, good resources around me. But still, somebody had to fuck off and go call, you know, the, the ambulance. And they, they made the call to emergency services. And then they came back. And I'm not joking when I tell you it was a hot 45 minutes. So as well it could be prepared or longer to wait. Because where I was was 45 minutes away from apparently the nearest volunteer fire brigade who had a bunch of sexy equipment hmm. that they wanted to try out and uh, on me, right? Uh, but keep in mind that that's a thing to remember, too. Where you were is very isolated. Uh, where I was, moderately isolated. The time for somebody to get there can be a long goddamn time. And you might have to self-rescue. Right. And, and when you get back to find somebody to help, you better know exactly where that person was. <laughs> yeah! So... <laughs> Again, with if yeah. you have some sort of yeah. even the GPS on your bike, if you're running right. a GPS, mark the location yeah. so that oh, you yeah. can you can give the grid coordinates or whatever. Yeah. So and you phones can, phones will work without service GPS. Wise. It's still a GPS. Yeah, so it's you can still GPS. drop a pin. Drop a pin. Yeah. yeah, drop a pin and take a hike. Uh, I guess unless you de googled your phone. Well, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> way to go there, tinfoil hat. <laughs> I can't believe that the first thing you didn't do that you did do was. 
drop a pin when you had your accident. I had my Garmin GPS in reach you should have re- inside my your phone. foil hat. So. You should have re-googled your phone and then dropped a pin. <laughs> I don't think I even knew what was going on. No, I mean, I was in shock. And there's a lot to be said for that, too, because I think that in your particular situation, you wouldn't have pressed the button. And I don't think until two weeks later, three weeks later, somebody would have showed you that device on your jacket. You might not even acknowledge that it was yours because it sounds like you got your shit scrambled. No, I did definitely, and that's yeah. why I think that an automatic, I mean, mm-hmm. a passive yeah. device an would automatic be better device. than, or, yeah. or like you Those said, are, like a decelerometer or something. We well, even have impact. simple ones where it's literally like a jet ski rope, mm-hmm. where it's like you know, yeah. just pull it off the the dash and you're it well. Goes we off. just we just stick an aerial burst flare, you know, a starlight. <laughs> we stick a starlight flare on his handlebars, and if he goes off the bike, it pulls the string and it launches the starlight. Well, I'll tell you what flare. really happened. Yeah, I had a Jado. Yeah, that was a Jado experiment. On the, on the back of the monkey. And, I, you know, I really just wanted to go a little bit faster than 55. You missed and the Darwin I, Awards yeah, by that much. You know, when I that Jado. You know, I, I thought about this a lot, yeah. and I was convinced that the guys from the Hollow Moon came and, and abducted you. Oh, yeah. And so it wasn't, they, they, the problem was. Because you knew. Well, they probed you and did all the things, and they were bringing you back, but then the tractor beam stopped working, and it dropped you about 40 feet. <laughs> you know down. what they found next to his motorcycle in the bottom of the ditch? What? Sasquatch Prince. Yeah, I'm sure. Sasquatch said, nah, not this guy, man. No, no, he knows too much. And a box of candy. Get him the fuck out of here. <laughs> Maybe that's how you made it up to the road. Yeah, Sasquatch. Sasquatch. They, they, yeah. t- they hauled you up to the road, man. I just still think it was a bunch of fucking Your spirit raccoons. animals. For three hey. weeks, they couldn't figure out why you were leaking fluid out of your butt. <laughs> You got the full revenant. <laughs> I explained his broken spine too. <laughs> just, just Sasquatch hickeys all over his neck. <laughs> Poor Steve. <laughs> Once you go Sasquatch, you never go back. <laughs> Once you go Squatch, no, you're gonna need a wheelchair. <laughs> Once you get past the smell, <laughs> you got it licked. <laughs> And you wouldn't have to wear your glasses because he's blurry anyways. Oh, my God. I didn't come here to get abused. But he did kiss me. <laughs> That's the whole story about the amnesia. Yeah. That's yeah. the whole story about the amnesia. He's going go to gonna go to a therapist. They're going to do that revision shit. He's going to be like, oh, God, Sasquatch. They're going to give him regression therapy. Yeah, yeah. Mm. He's going to start, gonna start squatch making out. Well, now oh, you got me, now you got me thinking. Oh, <laughs> All he does is talk about, like, you just like Chewbacca. Chewbacca. Yeah, yeah. Chewbacca. <laughs> they get him under, and he's like, <laughs> I think he's been squatched. <laughs> you you know, know, and every one of my vehicles, I do put a. The squatch thing on it. Uh, I do. <laughs> I know. And my wife. Oh, I know you're you. a true believer. The wife comes home, finds him jacking off to Harry and the Hendersons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Christmas, the, the Star that Wars tape Christmas broke, special. That tape broke a long time ago yeah. from overuse. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay. Well, the, the moral of the story is: have something that tells somebody else when you're about to get raped by a Sasquatch. That's right. <laughs> because the, the butt you save may be your own. That's right. Yeah. You don't have to worry about your taint if you're not getting raped by Sasquatch. Well, again, for him to have all the broken ribs on his entire one side of his fucking body. That, that was from spooning. <laughs> <laughs> Super aggressive Sasquatch spooning. <laughs> again, yeah. Sasquatch Steve. has cuddle aggression. <laughs> Grumpy screwer guy. Grumpy screwer guy. Power bottom. <laughs> the rest of his life. That's it. Steve Knievel power bottom. But, <laughs> but only to Sasquatch. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's tough. I, I love that. We we wait so long for you to come back just so we could bust your balls. Yes. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> we were we were all warned in the text. Yeah. It is a hazing ritual, so oh, here we are. Oh, yeah, but you know what? It was like putting on an old pair of slippers with him on this, the coming through on the, uh, yeah. the voice over here. Yeah, it was. Were they yeah. furry? Oh, you know, very just furry. comfortable. Were just they comfortable, just, comfortable just, slippers. Just man. the way it should be, man. They were like, yeah. they were like Mickey Mouse slippers. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, because I didn't bring in my computer or anything, uh, we're not going to do any uh, podcast uh, hate mail or anything today. Well, wait, wasn't there a new guy that was awesome? Like, wasn't there, what was his name? Mavis? No. Dave uh, Matheson. Dave Matheson. Dave Matheson. We're going to talk about his shit later. Okay. Hey, you guys want give to give it a stab? 
No, no, I just, okay. I just, we'll I remember next time. But we got a new podcast. We new Patreon member. David the guy Matheson. seems cool as fuck. Cool as fuck. Honda Coolest Dream guy owner. Ever. Yeah, gotta love that. Yeah, yeah, Wrenching yeah. his own bikes. Absolutely a number one. Uh, we'll we'll hit on him next week. We'll, I think we'll we should that. feature him next week. I think maybe we should. Yeah, yeah. I think he's he's got a good story. Yep. Um, yeah. Good. Good. We'll, good, we'll uh, even set up the Honda Dream right here on the bar. We <laughs> can. We can. But he's got a good diagnostic. He's got a good tech tip question and a good diagnostic problem on a Honda Dream. Something we all know and love here, and with something too that we've had this problem. So I think everybody at the table who's owned one of these old bikes has had this same problem and has been bedeviled in the same way by this particular problem. Yeah. So we're going to talk about it next week because it's fascinating, and he seems like a great guy. I mean, I've never got a vibe like this from an email. Well, this guy has to be the that, coolest. I just think guy. that he completely understands. Us. Steve joined. Yeah, his, yeah. Steve's watching his OnlyFans. Like it, oh, yeah. it was. It was an instant thing. Yeah, yeah. And he's just a good kismet. You know, good. He, good. He might be my twin flame. There good you go. Midwestern <laughs> fella. Nothing wrong with that. Um, so that's just super cool, right? You got to love that shit. Uh, anybody got anything else? Smith, did you did you work one up for us? Did not. Oh mm. come oh, on! Hey, oh. hey Phil. Yeah. Um, I think we need to address the bag and on the on the bar. I'm trying to find the deets. Okay. Uh, yeah. There is a card if you want to read the card. Yeah, but I was wondering if there was a name in that card. Can you uh, there it? is. There is. Uh, right. Hang on one second. All right. All right. Yeah, because I'd sent it over, but I don't have my computer with me. Nathan so. Roundtree? Thank you very much. Good there enough. Go. Good enough for me. All right, Tom, uh, if you notice behind us, there is the elephant in the room, in which case this is a beautiful wrapped package in yeah. the room. Uh, so if you... Dan, if you'd be kind enough to hand that hand over that, here to the middle of the table, over. I'll do the honors. Because Is there this. a tractor wheel I can oh, stand oh. behind? Yeah. <laughs> is there? And by the way, the Cleveland Moto Podcast, when we get gifts, they're not usually wrapped this nicely. Yeah, yeah. no kidding. Yeah. Don't ruin that. Yeah, yeah. We'll say that for later. Have a there, there is a card. We're going to repurpose the shit out of this. Yeah, right. I say, Phil, there's some, there's some info on that card. We've got to read it first. Uh, so, yeah. So, don't here we go. Uh, if you don't mind. Uh, thanks for the hours of wonderful vintage motorcycle and scooter ramblings and tech talk. I look forward to every episode. Thought you guys might like a little campfire to chat around whenever you want. What? Nate. <laughs> uh, from Virginia. Wait a minute, Nate Roundtree. Were you you were just talking about being German and having fireworks for your Remember table? Remember when I said I kept saying it was called Tischdecke? Yeah, and it's actually not Tischdecke. Just means tablecloth. Oh, uh, Decke, Tisch, Tischdecke, tablecloth. What it's called is Tischfeuerwerk. Tischfeuerwerk. Still tables, still there, but it's okay. table fireworks. Yeah. Um, I I printed a retraction about that in the show notes for last week's show. Um, so yeah, my German's not gotten any better. Uh, <laughs> no, but this is this is crazy. Yeah. This so way. this was nice that. Um, so, but I want to know how an entire campfire is going to fit into this goddamn box. I don't know. Elf de Tuffer. Dude, oh, I'm excited. A shrimp oh, dish. Don't, don't break the bag. Shrimp dish well, is a Because you know we like a good board. crackle cast around here. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, we like a good crackle cast. All right. But without the bugs. Yeah, it's a box in a box. Oh. Does a that box say flammable bag. on it? Is there Chinese writing on that? It does say... Fl- fl- holy shit. All right, let's get into this. It says fragile. <laughs> we all know what that means. Point it the other way. It's, all right, here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh. oh there's one of those. Aha. Yeah, this is like this. This is sleepy cinch level shit. I, there's glass involved. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> All right. <Yeah. laughs> oh, right now, sleepy's saying is, man, you can put your weed in that. Yeah. All right. Hold on. <laughs> like, where's the? Igno- okay. 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 There we go. It's a right. really short squad bog. Hey, wait, hold on. We got some. We got, we got pieces. Mean, we know. got parts. <laughs> we got that. Some assembly that required. Some is assembly this a whiskey required. burner? Um, this is an alcohol stove. Oh yeah. So this is a don't call it uh, don't call it a sterno. sterno. Don't call it a sterno. Uh, but it's not a sterno. It's a <clears throat> maybe. You need a lighter. I think I put the other cap in there. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> hey, give us a fire professional. Right, right. read the I'm, instru- out. I'm out. Do you want to read the instructions? I tried not to read the instructions. <laughs> Somebody else read the instructions. <laughs> do you want? So we, we're going to have to buy alcohol fuel for it. Because, we do have a professional here. Because as much as my gut but tells me to just, just put the 151 in it, yeah, put the Stro in it, yeah. run it on Stro. That, uh, that bottle or whatever it was Johnny Mac dropped off here months ago that we still can't identify. I'll try it. <laughs> Why not? Portuguese rum. Yeah, let's give it a shot. Let's see if it burns. <laughs> Yeah, see if it Is burns. That Portuguese. Yeah, but apparently you okay. can cook. Okay, uh, we couldn't. Mem- we couldn't no, remember, remember what it was. What was that stuff that was? Um, uh, it was some kind of tequila or something. But remember, it tasted like rubbing alcohol. It was, oh, I got it now. I'm on point. Well, what about hand sanitizer? There you go. Oh. <laughs> and that's the uh, put her outer. Snuffle. Oh. And that's the uh, 
<laughs> yeah, okay, got it. Uh, and then he's got the glass. What's that? Is that the fuel can that goes in the bottom? That's the nothing right there. That's just a... That's nothing but sadness and empty promises. I think you have to remove the plastic first, too. Yeah. Probably have to remove all the blue plastic. But in any case, you know... Well, that would burn Hey, Tom, off. if you want to find any high-proof... Fi find some overproof alcohol back there. That's a bio bioethanol only. Or just gasoline. Bioethanol only. <laughs> bioethanol is... <laughs> just gasoline. Bioethanol is... <laughs> Do not it's corn liquor. Liquor. Corn liquor. Corn liquor. Corn liquor is bioethanol. Well, yeah. here. Straight corn liquor. <laughs> straight corn there liquor. There it is. Straight is it, corn is it, liquor. Is it over 160 proof? Uh, probably. It... Nah. If it's over 160, it'll sustain ignition. So if you've got stro or you've got rum no, fire, no, 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 no. or you got 151, it'll do two in a pinch. Didn't bring you 151? Okay. All right. I could swear we lit up that Portuguese rum that one night. I thought we did too. Just testing it. Yeah, I thought we did too. What's, is that the, the secret sauce you brought in the bottle? Yeah, that has the ladder built inside it. Yeah, that's got the ladder built inside. Yeah, where is that? Yeah, I don't know. It's back there somewhere. It's in the undrinkable column. Oh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> it's, in the, it's, in the, it's in the that hurt my face column. Yeah. <clears throat> don't, it, sometimes when John brings you liquor, don't drink it. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that's got to be the snufferator. That's All ten of my fingers used to work right. liquor. Wait, wait. I'm not exactly sure. There it is. You got it? Let's see if it burns. I wonder if any of us has a lighter. I wonder if this fire extinguisher still oh. works. I do. Yeah. If you go to the brown bag that's on the table, oh, somebody's got to have one in their pocket. All right. right. All right. Let's see if that works. As a, as a professional, here, me. Ah. <laughs> hey, why has it got a ladder in the box? I just got to make. We talked about that. Okay. In case you fall in. Oh, shit. Oh, Jesus God. Christmas. That was the worst, worst pitch ever. All right. Fire. There we go. Hey, it's fire. Look at that. That's good fuel. It's blue fire. I'll give you All right. fire. I give you fire. All right. Well, you know what? We got fire. We actually now have what? A crackle cast on the table. Ooh, it's funny because that booze that booze burns just blue. We need some. Thin, uh, we choked it out. We, we need, need some thin more. slices of marinated beef. Yeah. We need more choke. We need. A, <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Well, thank you so very much, Nate. That is a fucking fantastic gift. By the time you see this podcast next week, we'll have some appropriate fuel here and have it doing the nice uh, orange flames that are so sexy and attractive. We should add copper sulfate. We could. It'll make fun colors. Yes. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, they can, we can just bring shit to sprinkle over. Because cinnamon's fun. You just sprinkle cinnamon over. It's a good Ooh, time. We could also... Magnesium. We, magnesium. We could right. roast ghost peppers to see who could take it the longest. We could also just use white phosphorus and just make it fun for everybody. <laughs> I don't know if the landlord like that. No, no, no. He's a prick. <laughs> well, yes. thank you very much, Nate from Virginia. That's super cool. We have literally a... Or we could, put a, a, we could just put a lipo battery in there and cut it open. Got them right here, but yeah, oh, yeah. Got, <laughs> got some lipos right there. Uh, well, that's cool. If anybody else has anything to add, uh, now's your time to do it. No, Speak now or forever hold your pizza. All right, that's it, guys. Thank you. So great seeing you again, Steve. So well, happy you came out come. um, again. Yep. Yeah, you don't yep. understand how many people, like, yes. how long have people been sending, hey, individually, Constantly. individually, Constantly. all of yeah. us have been getting messages yeah. from people asking, Man, when's when is GSG Steve going to come back? back? When's, when's people Stuart were concerned about yeah. you. They were making yeah. sure you were all Thank right. Thank you, everybody, for your concern, and yeah. I'm we fine. We had people give prayers. Mm -hmm. We had people well, prayers are the That's what I want the most. And so, give prayers. I mean, so that's, that's saying something. So that's, that's a big deal, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, that's yeah. it. That's all I got. Folks, ride fast and take chances. Play us out of here, Johnny. Get us the fuck out of here, man.